Authority on Monday, June 17, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. Roll call, please. Roll call. No worries. I distracted. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Commission Commissioner Bosco. Yeah, here. Commissioner Sakala. Here. Commissioner Crisati. Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Denny. Commissioner Kiner. Here. Chairman Ludwig. Here. Commissioner Muller. Here. Commissioner Sparaza. Here. Vice Chairman Suzak. Here. And Commissioner Ungeyer. We have eight members present. Three are absent. <laughs> We have no approval of minutes. Item two, moving on to item three, I don't believe we have any old business. Item four, I don't think we have any new business. So we move on to item five, items for discussion. Resolution setting sewer use charge rate uh, for 2019-2020 billing service fees and rates. Where is in accordance with Chapter 103, Section 7 255 of the Connecticut General Statutes, the Enfield, Enfield Sewer Authority held a public hearing on June 3rd, 2019, at 6 30 p.m. in the Council Chamber of the Town Hall, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, hearing comments on proposed 2019 2020 sewer service fee schedule. Therefore, be it resolved, the Enfield Sewer Authority does hereby adopt the sewer service fee schedule attached hereto as attachment A, prepared by the Town Manager's Office. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilor S uh, Commissioner Sakala. Uh, motion by uh, Commissioner Sakala, second by Commissioner Muller. Discussion, please. Sorry about that. John is not here. I know he, well, for the record, I know he was going to provide some back, some of the questions about how the, the budget was, you know, shown expenses versus um, expenses versus revenue. Go ahead. Yeah. He sent out, um, right. we uh, shared with councils answers to those. I see him coming. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. I knew he was coming as of when he was in my office at a little before five. John, come right up. Uh -oh. You got the Sit floor. right down, turn on the mic. So, red res resolution and then um, defer to you on some of the f kind of budgeting questions that we heard at the public hearing. I know you put a memo out you know, as well. Okay. Um, so kind of why expenses and revenues were sort of not, you know, maybe the general question to begin with. How well, as it was shown the, in the budget. The water pollution control fund is is it operates like a more like a business than than a normal town fund. Okay, it has it's they call it a, an enterprise fund. Um, it's not exactly an enterprise fund because we don't calculate depreciation and things like that, but it's, it, it operates similar to that. It, it's an independent agency or an independent fund of the, of the town with its own revenue source. And the only way for, I mean, right now we're operating with a negative fund balance, which we've had since the mid 2000s. Um, so the only way to do that is to bring the only way to correct that and get a positive fund balance and develop reserves for future um, um, expenditures and, and uh, capital needs or, or whatever is to have more revenues than expenses. And so right now, um, what we proposed was to have the when we proposed the budget was a uh, thirty six dollar per quarter. Um, uh, uh, what well, we used to call it the ready to serve charge, but now it's uh, we've changed it to just a base charge. Um, and that amount would have generated the excess that you see um, when we when Woodard and Curran developed that 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 amount was based on a, a stu the studies from Woodard and Curran. And when they did that, they, had um, included a few expenses. There were 500,000 for sewer collection systems in advance of road work and um, NOVAC study personnel increases, which were approximately uh, $591,000. Um, so that makes the number look a little higher. The rest of that was to was basically to re rebuild the fund balance to, to reduce the negative amount of the fund balance. 
Um, when we took those numbers out, basically it would reduce, it would, it would um, rebuild the fund balance faster. Um, that's, that was what number we proposed was the $36. So um, when you have, you have proposed reducing that amount uh, from $36 per quarter down to uh, $30 per quarter, and that would just you know, slow down the, the you know, rebuilding of the fund balance. Any questions? Commissioner Sferraza. So, John, just so I'm clear, I think the question uh, some of the folks had was last time it was like seven and a half million dollars we were expecting in revenue, but the cost of operating was 5.8 or something like that. Are you saying that the difference is to is to build up the fund so we have a reserve? Is that what you're saying? So we yes, we've been operating in. Since the mid 2000s, we have, well, since the mid 2000s, we've been operating pretty much on a kind of status quo basis. But from uh, the, the early 2000s through the mid, we did not we we did not transfer enough money from the general fund to operate the um, the uh, water pollution control fund at a you know to cover the the expenses. Um, and, and that basically created a negative fund balance. So right? you don't have enough revenue, your expenses are higher, you, have, you end up with a negative fund balance. So would this be something we have to do every year or is there an anticipated amount when we, our fund balance is so much we don't have to do this anymore? I mean, every yeah, year are we going to collect um, more than we need to build up a fund balance, but when we get it to a certain point, well, at some point, yes, we would we would be able to, to get there. Um, you know, I, I you could question probably 10, 15 percent of your expected. I mean, I, I know our rainy day fund on the uh, general fund side, our our council policy is nine percent of the total expenditures of the town. OK, so nine to 10 percent of your t projected expenditures. Uh, for the next year would probably be a fairly safe amount and, and as a you know a, a target fund balance but we've been operating like I said at a negative since since then okay let okay. me let me just Thanks. I'll just say uh, mayor and council it would nothing would please me more than to be here long enough to when this stabilizes and we know the exact needs of the uh, of the plant and what our expenditures are would be to keep the rate the same or to be able to reduce it. The precarious position we're in, this has just been implemented over the last couple of years. And as John said, we started off in a bad position because we're, we're, we're indebted to the general fund. So for this short interim, we're going to have a, a bit of a surplus. And that, John, clearly the reason we know it is because he revealed it. But the costs that we have to pay back are that the debt we owe to the general fund. Um, we deferred, as I said, and we've said it, in the budget presentations, 500,000 in road construction for new sewer lines that we know is going to come online. We have several pump stations that aren't covered by the referendum that is upgrading the station, which will hopefully be completed by 2020, which is going to be in the millions of dollars. That's coming online. Um, the NOVAC report and what we've learned from our consultant and from other experts in the area is what happens with these plants when you put in a brand new 30, 40 million is you don't put the personnel in to do the proper maintenance and uh, have the money to maintain it. So NOVAC actually recommended five to six new people. That's when it comes online, we get the new superintendent and we review how the plan is. That's over $500,000 a year in the operating cost. The bond the debt service for that we went over, which will kick in in 2021, is millions a year. So you may have a short period of time where it appears that you have the surplus, but that surplus is spoken for. And that doesn't even account for what we need to do for the rainy day fund. So I think it's going to have to be that we look, that we, we've, you know, we've now I think are building a bit of a track record that when we spend money on consultants and they recommend things to us, we actually do those things. We did it with Honeywell. We did it with Novak. We're 
paid a lot for Woodard and Kern, and having worked with them, and they come to our meetings every week in the plant upgrade, they seem to be to know what they're doing. They recommended these rates, and we didn't follow them completely. We've been uh, not implementing what they recommended. We're coming closer this year in our recommendation, and on the joint facilities, we're, we're hiring a, a firm to look at all our facilities, and I hope we'll follow their recommendations where we can. So I think, you know, at some point we've got to deter, defer to those experts, and um, I would like nothing more than to have been able to uh, keep this rate the same or have reduced it, but it's just not possible at this time. We, we need to be able to stabilize, get all the construction done, get a couple years of empirical data under our belt after that once we're paying the debt off, once we've repaid the general fund, and I would love nothing more than a, in a budget in the future to propose it's the same this year or we're able to actually cut it a little bit. But unfortunately where we are now, this is the bare minimum that we need to do. Councilman Bosco, Commissioner Bosco. Okay, I, I, I won't be supporting this. I, I have a problem, and I really think we need to take care of it, and that's, you know, it's not for this this fight, but we really need to look, in, in my opinion, on the, the, the meter size. If we are charging so much to go out, it doesn't matter how big of a pipe you have coming in, it's still the same amount going out. And that's the only thing that I find that is not fair with this is because someone has a bigger pipe coming in their house for whatever reason they may want it they are going to get charged a different rate now on the flip side I know what we pay for our cottages and this is a deal I mean well we, we, we pay per unit we only have two water meters coming in but we pay per unit and we pay more than what we're we're paying here so uh, and if you look at the the rates across the state that we had, we're really in line. We're actually very good on the uh, the rate. But uh, you know, I, I understand where people are getting mad, as, especially as they say they, you know, they they water their lawn or whatever. But you know, again, we had taxes that weren't fair. We were charging them on our the, your car and anything else that was uh, a value that was on the grand list. But I really, the, the one part that I don't like about this is the meter size. And um, I would hope that we would have looked at it last time because uh, with the committee, we, they said they would look at it. And, uh, you know, things, a year goes by so fast, you don't even realize that you're into the next budget season. And, you know, we didn't look at that meter size. So I really would hope that, you know, you could look at that meter size again because i you know we're, we're charging for the water out what difference does it make is how big the water coming in uh, you can't really take any more water than you're pushing out the the other end and because um, i would love to support this but i just can't it just doesn't seem right to me so uh, with that being said i i hope you put it on your list next year when it comes into budget that we relook at meter size Thank you. De De uh, Deputy Commissioner Suzak. I guess I have a question on the bonding. Now, I understand when the town bonds, we get, our rates are going to be based on our fund balance and all these other fine things. Now, this water pollution control, when it goes to bond the money for the sewer plant, will they be using the lack of a better word, the credentials of the town versus the fact that they have a negative fund balance? It is my understanding that they will go based on the, the you know, they're, they're essentially issued by the town of Enfield. Um, we will be budgeting to pay for them out of the water pollution control fund. But, you know, rates. for whatever, whatever we were, you know, for whatever reason they would that still be issued by the town of Enfield. Right. So we're going to, so water pollution control gets the benefit of being part of the town of Enfield, which has really, for lack of a, a, a much better economic standing than the water pollution control at this point. That is my understanding, yes. Okay. Thank you. So even though we try to operate it as a separate entity, they're looking at all as all right. one entity. Right. And what's in the budget book was based on the $36 for the um, flat rate for the quarters. That's correct. And I know you know what, Joey, after we we really once Tom moved to state, yeah. I mean it was it's been difficult to get that subcommittee. The problem is a year goes 
goes by so fast. You it does. And I think I think we have to have something that's like residential and commercial for our that flat rates. Market. And I think that's what we need to strive to. I think we have, again, we do, <laughs> and we try to be fair, and we end up with so many layers of something to look at that we make it so much, so much more complex than it has to be. So I, I will be in favor of it, but I, I think we need to have a meeting pronto and get that meter thing addressed. Thank you. Commissioner Sakala. Thank you. Um, so just like any <coughs> thing that we pass, this resolution, if if we want to go in and modify it, we can modify it later if, if, if we need be. So I have a question, and John, this actually might not be a question for you. Um, so I'm looking at the base quarterly charge, and where would the normal resident fall in the meter size? There in the smallest. Five-eighths? Yes, I believe that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. So like these six, eight inch are just few and far between. Those are like your massive manufacturing buildings or industrial. Give me, give me one second. I'll tell you how many of each size we have. I, honestly, I'm, I'm just curious because some of these numbers look really, really scary, you know, $2,400. But um, if the majority of the residents are falling between, you know, five eighths or three fourths, then that's a much smaller number. Most are five eighths. Okay. Right? Okay. I mean, if you have the information, that's fine. If not, I just, everybody of, up here. Of told our meters, 14,000, a little over 14,000 of our meters are, there's about 15,500 uh, meters total. 14,031 of them are five eighths, 1,000 are, thir are three quarters, 184 are one inch, 99 are an inch and a half. 180 or two inches and three inches are there are eight thank you mm -hmm. that's actually a good question so that's roughly 14 out of 15 90 right my yeah. math 90 percent who would have a three inch uh, meter size i think that well i'm i'm, I'm kind of guessing a little I bit know, here this but is i totally think not that, a question for you but i, you're I there, think so that I'm the main you. attempt was to to get the the larger meters they assume most of them would be commercial. Yeah. But it's, you know, like I said, it's not not a perfect fit because I don't know that we know, I don't know that our, our information, our data keeps whether they're commercial or residential. Okay. Thank you. So before I go, roughly 93.3%, roughly, again, rough numbers are on the fifth. Yeah. Great question. That's actually a great question. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, Commissioner Connor, Second, excuse me. I guess we're all focusing in on the meter size, John. Um, did homeowners have a choice as to whether they get a three-quarter inch? I think I know what the answer is, but I only heard from you. Do they have a choice of getting a three-quarter inch or five-eighths inch meter? Probably not. I do not know the answer. Uh, I'm going to assume that. the answer is, is probably no. Bill, well, um, no, sorry. Chris, I'm can sorry. answer that question. Uh, yeah. Recently, somebody had a discussion with me to say that that is not the case. So I don't want to elaborate further. They should talk to their water company. Right. But I know since this has been passed, people have switched to the 5 8th. So it isn't. Right. I'm just going to say that's somebody who I, I trust their opinion and is a credible source. And having been involved in this process to say that you may have um, an ability to request a so different Some people size. then, Chris, were given that choice. I'm not too sure. I don't, I don't think it's a choice. I think it's a right and that they've availed themselves in it, of it. So if people have a question, they should talk to their respective water company in town. Okay. What benefits accrue to a household uh, for a three-quarter inch versus a five-eighths inch meter? I mean, again, I'm, it's probably a rhetorical question, Ms. John. This is not your bailiwick. I, I know that. But I, I'm not sure what benefits these people get, and they're ending up paying another fifteen dollars per quarter, right? Mm -hmm. For uh, the um, three quarter. Yes, that range. would be the. Uh, it would be fifteen dollars per quarter, and I, I, I really, you know, I mean, I imagine you would have greater uh, flow of water and greater pressure, but I, I don't know that for sure. Okay, All right. uh, I'm going to end up supporting this um, this resolution, um, but I have the same questions that um, were raised by. Uh, uh, by Joe and by uh, by Gina and um, and Donna as well, but I will be supporting the uh, resolution. So, so John, I know I, I know we had the presentation in a w or late fall, early winter. 
at the $30 base fee, when do we expect to be break even? It's now we pushed it back a couple of years, correct? Um, well, y yes, it would push it back. So, I mean, we paid off. I don't know off the top of my head when, when it, by, by changing it, when it would, um, when we would expect to break even. Like I said, we, we're going to, you know, you'd make a big jump this year, and then next year as the, the Novak additional personnel come on board, and you, you have the um, the debt repayments um, will be bu will be budgeted out of here. You know, obviously it would slow down then. So with the close of the year coming up, maybe what what after this year's def estimated deficit in August is that too early? Maybe we can get it just to see where we're at. Some updated projections so people know where you know where we're going if if the thirty dollar you know th this passes tonight. So then. You at least give. It, I know we did this back in the winter, but maybe have an update. You know, is it two years down the road? You know, all things being equal, I understand it's. You know, things can change. You know, to the point of the the pump stations. Yeah, you know, I don't think most people realize that we have to update those as well, which is significant. And then you know the that we inherited a deficit situation, deficit situation that we're actually getting close to paying off, and building some reserves. You know, I think though if we run knowing the bonding agencies at some point. If we continue to run a deficit here and it's not address it, that would be, I think, considered a ding. If they depends how deep they go in our analysis. I mean, I know you're meeting with them, but I mean, it's not yeah, a big I deal. Mean, but still, there is a we 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 have a meeting scheduled uh, for S and P for for this year's bond issue, um, and there is a slide on the water pollution control facility, the, the right. rates, the um, you know, so we'll be discussing it with them, and they'll have questions on it. So I mean, we can ignore the situation, and only it's only going to get worse. I mean, it's as simple as that. We can ignore it, and you know, and then you know, uh, I mean, which we try to be as fair as possible. And I think that's maybe a good, good suggestion for the subcommittee if we have someone who's willing to run with that next next year to to update with the. It's the actually meters. the town councilors yeah. from um, facilities are right. the subcommittee for this. Yeah, you know, and my only my only other. Uh, question would be when so when will the town be paid off as well do you know that's top of your head the, the town could be paid off at the same time as the so when we break right. in theory break even the town will be paid off right because the, the, the what happened is the expenditures were made right. you know but we didn't have enough revenue to cover it so the the expenditures were paid out by the town right so that creates the liability to the town from the water pollution control fund and so you know once we, once we get that fund balance positive we can we could pay the whole thing off my, my, my only suggestion again if maybe august september maybe an update where after you close the books or have a good idea where we are at, just to give everyone an update it'd be great deputy uh, commissioner suzak so we've gone out now and we're trying to um because we had a problem with um receiving our funds when we were billing we were at we were not, um, people weren't paying their sewer usage fee. And now we're getting more revenues in for that. Can you explain to everybody what happens to that money? That Because some people think it's extra money that's coming in, but it's monies that we expected to receive five, some of it five years ago, and we're just now receiving it. So this, how does this money play into the budget? Well, uh, the the when we developed the revenue budget, or, you know, we ex we anticipated um, the revenues, you know, to, to be basically. I, I think they expected to collect a hundred percent of what they were, you know, of what we were billing. Now we don't even do that on the town side, so um, that may have been a little unrealistic. Um, you know, I budget every year to ex ex about two percent. You know, I don't want to, to collect about 90 percent of what we actually bill. So, um, but I believe it was, you know, because of the implementation, it was a big change. We didn't really, we didn't really do the um, the collection that we would do otherwise. Um, and so, you know, we kind of gave them a grace period, and it it, it built up a little higher than we expected. Um, and I know that Lynn, my predecessor, had plans to, uh, you know, she was in the process of, of developing a lean program and stuff when she left. So that transition 
added another year of delay into it and um, you know we we got through that part of it and and so we started with the lean program and now we've put to, uh, transitioned to, to reporting certain um, accounts to uh, state marshals for collection so that program has been pretty successful um, probably not very popular for the people that are, are getting reported but uh, it has been successful and we brought in a, a, a lot it's kind of hard to tell exactly because the rate increase that we had for for 2019 kind of offsets a little bit of the um, you know the the what we collected from the past so it kind of obscures it a little bit um, I'll, I'll be able to know a little bit better as we do the year-end closeout how well we've done as as far as reducing the the backlog of receivables and again that I know that'd be great in the August meeting as well because I think a lot of people again want us to see I know it's not popular but folks who continue to pay their rate it's very important for them so I think that's a key piece of information that we have listened and then we're trying to get folks who unfortunately didn't pay what they should have and I think that'll be a key piece of information you know that uh you know to your point from, could be five years ago that we didn't collect some of this and I know we're trying to be again level-handed not heavy-handed to sort of collect this money um, I, I that would be we should yeah. be able to do something yeah. any other questions councilman Bosco yeah <clears throat> uh, over on Walker Drive are are we are them houses metered for this the, the prison or do they run uh, just down through our source system or you know, they ca they captured on a meter that we get paid and if they aren't do we have water bills going to them houses or how are we capturing that money from the the state I'd have to look into that Did you look into that mm -hmm. And, and and then uh, Bill, the only difference you have is if you have a three-quarter inch, you're going to get more volume in the house. So if you had a jacuzzi tub, you're going to get your tub filled faster. Or if you 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 got sprinkler systems out in the yard, your sprinkler systems are going to work much better. It's like drinking through a straw or something big. So that's the only benefit people would have going between uh, five eighths three quarter or one inch it's really how much water they want to bring in at one time but doesn't mean they use any more water so that's why i think you know on the residential the the two inch meter well maybe because you're going to put more volume into our sores at a, a faster speed probably but the the house ones you know inch down i mean that's that's really what i'm talking about any other questions Thank you, John. Roll call, please. Commissioner Bosco. Against. Commissioner Sakala. Four. Commissioner Davis. Four. Commissioner Kiner. Four. Chairman Ludwig. Four. Commissioner Muller. Four. Commissioner Sferraza. Four. Vice Chairman Suzak. Four. And Commissioner Ungeyer? Four. We have eight in favor, one against. Okay. Moving on to miscellaneous, I don't believe we have any. I have a motion to adjourn the Water Pollution Control Authority by Councillor Muller. Second. Second by Commissioner Ungeyer. All those in favor by show of hands. We are adjourned. We'll take one quick minute before we open up the public hearing. We need one, no? Uh, it is 7 o'clock. Uh, it's calling the regular meeting of Monday, June 17, 2019, to order. We are a little bit behind. 60, 650 was the Public Hearing Neighborhood Assistant Act. It is 7 o'clock. Public hearing ground rules. A public hearing has been scheduled to allow interested citizens, interested citizens an opportunity to express their opinion regarding the Neighborhood Assistant Act proposals. Roll call, please. Councillor Bosco. Councillor Sakala. Here. Councillor Crisotti. Councillor Davis. Here. Councillor Denny. Councillor Kiner. Here. Mayor Ludwig. Here. Councillor Muller. Here. 
Councillor Sferraza. Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Here. Councillor Ungeyer. Here. We have nine members present, two are absent. The following notice of public hearing was published in the Hartford Current Friday, June 7, 2019. Town of Enfield Legal Notice. The Enfield Town Council will hold a public hearing in the Enfield Town Hall, Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, on Monday, June 17, 2019 at 6.50 p.m. to allow interested citizens an opportunity to express their opinions regarding the Neighborhood Assistant Act proposals. Any, any direct questions, to the t please direct any questions to the Town Manager's Office at 860-253-6350 or at the Town Manager at Enfield.org. Submitted by Susan Olnicki, Town Clerk, dated June 4, 2019. Uh, the ground rules for the public hearing, there is no time limit, but we ask each person not to take up too much time so that everyone has an opportunity to speak. After each person who desires had one chance, we shall submit those individuals a second. After those individuals desire a second, we shall permit those individuals a third, fourth, etc. Please refrain from personalities. Would anyone like to speak specifically on the Neighborhood Assistant Act? Welcome. Hello, everyone. Uh, William Lee, 6 Stony Brook Road. Um, here tonight in the capacity of, of uh, a member of the Hazardville Institute Conservancy, we have an application in, in the packet. Not sure if it's the only one this year, but um, I wanted to make sure um, that uh, the two new members on the dais and, and the public understand what the Neighborhood Assistance Act is and, and what it isn't. It is, it is not a request for funding. What it allows the conservancy to do is actually to um, execute um, a fundraising effort in the corporate community and in exchange for um, donations that are made under this program's um, banner, um, the state of Connecticut then returns a tax credit to an entity that is filing a corporate tax in the state. So it is, once this is approved as a community beneficial project by the council, it then allows the conservancy or any organization who's participating to then go out and execute its own fundraising campaign in the, in the business community. So this year, we're, um, our efforts are involved in additional fundraising around the heating system, and it's a high efficiency um, proposal, so it qualifies for a 100% tax credit from the state for any entity who contributes um, under this program. It's a tight time frame. That's why it's, it comes to you guys on a very regulated schedule. We then, um, once it's submitted to the state, we then start our fundraising effort. And it, I believe we have until September to generate contributions to benefit the heating system at the Institute. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak specifically on the Neighborhood Assistant Act? Anyone else? Going once. Going twice. Anyone like to speak a second time? Good. You're good. I declare this public hearing closed. Thank you. Anyone need a break? No. I call the regular meeting Monday, June 17, 2019, 7:05 p.m. of the Enfield uh, regular Enfield Town Council prayer, Mr. Kiner. Before I recite tonight's prayer, I would like to ask for a moment of, of silent prayer in memory of Councilman Ed Denny's daughter, Jennifer, who passed away over the weekend. Heavenly Father, you guide everything in wisdom and love Accept our prayers that we offer for our nation, for our state, and for our town. In your goodness, watch over those in elected office so that people everywhere may enjoy freedom, security, and peace. We ask this through our Lord. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moving on to item three, roll call, please. Councillor Kiner. Thank you. I'm 
sorry. Here. Just say here. Here. Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Here. I'm sorry. Mayor Ludwig. Here. Councillor Muller. Here. Councillor Sparaza. Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Here. Councillor Ungeyer. Here. Councillor Bosco. Here. Councillor Sakala. Here. Councillor Crisotti. Councillor Davis. Here. Councillor Denny. There's nine members present, two are absent. Moving on to item four, the fire evacuation announcement. In case of a fire, please move, we, uh, go orderly to the back of the building, through your left or your right. We have an exit right out the door. Or to our left, your right, the door is right there under the exit sign. Go out the first door to your left, down the stairs, and orderly out into the parking lot. Uh, item number five, minutes of proceeding meetings. A special meeting June 3rd, 2019. Do I have a motion to approve? By Councillor Muller. Second. Second by Councillor Ungar. Is there any ad additions, deletions, or edits to these meetings? To the minutes, excuse me. Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, any abstentions? Two abstentions, seven in favor. Regular meeting, June 3rd, 2019. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. By Councillor Muller. Second. Seconded by Councillor Ungar. Is there any additions, deletions, edits? Deputy Mayor Suzak. I guess for me, I'd like to see, I mean, there's a lot, been a lot of questions coming in on the Head Start, so I watched the YouTube video, and there's a lot of conversation that goes on on page 7 of 22, where, and it's mostly comments um, from um, uh, Bob Crisotti and me, and um, I'd like to see them in the minutes. I think that, you know, based on the amount of questions that we are getting, on everything, I think that we need to elaborate and have as detailed a minute account of that section as possible. And then also on page 19 uh, of 22, um, it's, um, let me see if the paragraph, it's paragraph four, and that should be me, not Carl, saying that. And also um, between paragraphs five and six, um, I comment on the cost of the actual roofs, which according to the SBS report is $1.2 million per school. So I, I kind of would like to, you know, see just, I think the most important for me is the Head Start elaboration and some detail in that. Thank you. So that, so that means we hold off on the minutes? So the minutes, re I don't, we have to have a motion or just minutes, we'll table, table. Until, next, until next meeting. Okay, the minutes for a regular meeting June 3rd, 2019 be tabled to the next meeting. Okay, sorry. Trying to get my stuff in order here. Sorry. Do, 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 do. We uh, move on to item, item number six, special guests. We have a proclamation for the Hasville Institute, and I'd like to read it. Folks like to join in front. Invite members of the conservatory up here, please. Conservancy, sorry, conservatory. With the uh, with the light stick or with the candlestick and the uh, uh, you guys know what the clue. Welcome, folks. Don't be shy. I think we all get you on TV. Welcome, everyone. Proclamation honoring the 150th anniversary of the Hasville Institute. Whereas the Hasville Institute was established as a corporation by the act of the Connecticut legislator in 1863 for the purpose of erecting a building in a village of Hasville in the town of Enfield to be devoted to the moral and intellectual, intellectual improvement of the community. Whereas Colonel Augustus G. Hazard granted the parcel of land on the corner of Main and Maple Streets to the Hasville Institute in 1867, and the Institute building was completed in 1869, shortly after, shortly after Hazard's death. And whereas the Hazard in, Hazardville Institute was under the direction of its stockholders within the community for over 85 years, served the residents and three village churches as a meeting hall, library, school, playhouse, Grange, polling place, and a site for various culture, cultural and recreational activities, including movies, 
Boy and Girl Scout events, dances, and banquets. Whereas the Hasville Institute Conservancy Society incorporated by the Connecticut Secretary of State February 1979 to memorialize, memorialize the history of the Hasville area of the town of Enfield by preservation of the Hasville Institute building and to discover, purchase, commission, or otherwise procure and to preserve writings, newspapers, journals, and like to shed light on the history of Hasville Institute building in the surrounding area formerly known as the Village of Hasville. And whereas the Hasville Institute Conservancy Society, Inc. has saved the building from demolition stabilized and restored the structure, constructed in addition to accommodate and comply with the Americans with Disability Act and modern, modern building codes, has diligently upheld its mission to preserve, sustain the Hasville Institute, a landmark building in, integral to the village of Hasville and the town of Enfield, as a civic meeting place which will foster, encourage, and promote cultural, historical, and intellectual enlightenment and activities. Now, therefore, I, Michael Ludwig, Mayor of the town of Enfield, on behalf of the town council, the town administration, and the entire community do hereby officially commemorate Hasville Institute's 150th anniversary and congratulate the Hasville Institute Conservatory Society, Inc., members past and present for their dedication for furthering its mission. All set. Thank you. You got it. It's on. You, oh. It's on. Okay. Um, just a few words, and I promise I won't make you get the hook out. So on behalf of the Hazardville Institute Conservancy, I thank the town council for recognizing the 150th anniversary of the Institute. We share this honor with the founders of our organization, with their families, with former members, Carl Becker and Karen LaPlante, with the descendants of the Hazardville Institute Corporation and Hazard Gunpowder Factory Workers, and with all our supporters, some of whom are here this evening. And I just ask them to either stand or or raise their hands so that we can acknowledge you. Bill. No. It has been the generosity and goodwill of our local businesses, residents, and government that has sustained us on this journey and made progress possible. We remember those who are not here to share this moment, Westy Jones, Ed Allen, Tony Secundo, Harold Cody, Tom Arventelli, Leo Busick, Yvonne Prestwich, Robert McMullen, and Bill Schmidt. It was their vision, their love of history and community, which has strengthened our resolve to carry on their mission to restore and reopen the Institute so it may once again be a vibrant place. The Institute is more than just a building. For over a century, it fostered the social and intellectual needs of our community. It represents the spirit, work ethic, and industrial ingenuity of our town, state, and nation. It's about the people whose lives were enriched by relationships forged through the many activities held there. And last but not least, we thank Colonel Augustus Hazard for his foresight to realize the need for a community meeting place. His legacy lives on through the Hazardville Institute. Are you guys at the floor? No? All right. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. So we we have we're honored to have not only the Hasville Institute tonight as a special guest, but I think um, this is going to be a very special presentation. Joel, if you would mind coming forward, please. Again, I, I just want to preface this by saying, you know, um, you want to see some of the good work that our schools are doing. Um, I, I think people who are watching the show tonight will be honored by what you're about ready to present. So the floor is yours, and welcome. Thank you, and thank you for having us here tonight. My name is Joel Sine. I'm the 6 through 12 Social Studies Coordinator for Enfield Public Schools. Um, and more importantly, I'm here with Anna, who has some words to say about well, a project that her and her eighth grade classmates did this year at JFK. Thank you to Mayor Lugwood and the Town Council for having us here tonight. And thank you to our veterans and those soldiers we honor with this project, having given the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. Our eighth grade history classes at JFK have undertaken a special project designed to further honor the soldiers from Enfield who gave the last full measure of devotion to our nation during America's Civil War. 
our eighth, my eighth grade classmates and I at JFK researched the lives and military records of the 39 soldiers honored on the Civil War Soldiers Monument located on North Main Street. Working with partners, we developed short biographies of their lives and service during the war. Our goal was to get to know these heroes and what their experiences were before going off to war. Also, we were able to gain an understanding of the important role Enfield played in Union victory and the preservation of our nation. These men we honor share the same last names of Enfield Public School students, lived on our streets, worked on our land, and in our factories, several of whom were not much older than us before enlisting to fight. Our goal is to bring their stories to the current citizens of Enfield beyond just being a name on a monument. With that in mind, we presented our research to the graphic design students at Enfield High School. They have designed 39 signs, one for each soldier, to be posted throughout town displaying the biographies we have written. JFK students have done fundraisers to pay for the creation and printing of these signs. We were fortunate enough to present the first of these signs to Mayor Ludwig at the Memorial Day ceremony at the town hall. Thank you to our teachers, Mr. Ungeyer, Mr. Delaney, Mrs. Gilbert, and Mrs. Gilbert for assisting us with the research and writing, and our JFK administration, Mr. Petrucci at EHS and Central Office for supporting this project. And a special thank you to Mike Wrighty from Signorama for the printing of these signs. As mentioned, we have been working hard to raise funds for the printing of these signs through hot days and video game tournaments. Recently, we have had a local group step forward and offer to assist with the, cost, with the costs. Company G, 14th Regiment, Connecticut Volunteer Infantry, 1862 to 1865 Incorporated, a group of local historians and Civil War reenactors who are gracious enough to present to the eighth grade class every year at JFK, will be working with us on the final edits and functioning of the signs. We are very grateful for their contribution and the support of this work. Uh, thank you for, oh, I'd like to read the biography presented on the first sign to Before the war, Theodore Rockwood and his family were residents here in Enfield. The family included his parents Josiah and Emily Rockwood, his older brother Newell, his two younger sisters Emily and Anne, and his youngest brother Judson. His father packed powder as his job, as did many Enfield residents of the time. Prior to enlisting, records indicate Theodore moved to New Haven. He was enlisted as a first lieutenant on May 23, 1861. The 1860 census indicates that he was 24 old years old when he signed up for a service. He joined the Connecticut First Heavy Artillery on May 23, 1861. He was promoted two years later in December of 1863 to major in the U.S. Color Troops 19th Infantry. Major Rockwood was killed in action on July 30, 1864 in Petersburg, Virginia. The siege started on June 15, 1864 and ended on April 9, 1865. Specifically, Rockwood perished in the action referred to as the Battle of the Crater. During the siege, there were an estimated 42,000 casualties for the Union and 28,000 for the Confederate side. The Union troops attacked Petersburg, south of Richmond, Virginia, because they knew that if they won Petersburg, they would win Richmond, the capital of the Confederacy. They were correct, and these two locations ended up falling into the hands of the Union. Uh, this is a quote from uh, Major Theodore H. Rockwood. I would also speak of the gallant and genial Major Theodore H. Rockwood, 19th U.S. Color Troops, who, when the regiment was ordered forward, sprang upon the parapet, the first man fell cheering his regiment on. Such men cannot be easily replaced, nor the void they leave in our hearts readily filled. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you, Alice. So if you don't mind if I take a moment to brag about these students. Um, I would expect you to do so. <laughs> they did some pretty hardcore history for this, combing through census records um, from you know, 1850 and 1860, hundreds of thousands of Civil War soldiers um, in the Civil War database, a record of soldiers online. Um, and I, you know, I think what I'm most proud of is a lot of the details that they uncovered about these men um, and really found out who they were um, as people. Um, but their writing is just incredible in what they produced um, for these biographies. So we're incredibly proud of them. And we're also incredibly proud of the Enfield High School graphic design students who took this you know, pretty simple idea for um, presenting these biographies to the town and I think created 
um, a final product that is just gorgeous, and we're, we're proud to present to the citizens um, of Enfield. So we, we thank you again for, for having us, um, and we look forward to, once we get our, our labor force back in the high school in the fall, getting the other 38 of these um, produced, and, and our goal is to have them to present to the town by Veterans Day of next year fully completed. There you go. Any questions from anyone? Councilman Bosco. I think it's great. The only thing that I think would be better is if you had them all together in a little book, because mm. I would buy one. You know, I think a lot of people would buy it, uh, which would help maybe fund other things. Uh, so these, on that, on that note, what popped into my head when you say that is it's a great fundraiser to, you know, eventually pay for these, because these eighth grade students start their year as ninth graders with a unit in World War I. So I'd love to see this extended to World War I and then next year's eighth graders start with the unit on the Revolutionary War. Great idea. So when I look at this on a larger scale, I see a, a and, tremendous and, and opportunity. And I would bet you there'd be a market for it. I think so. Mm -hmm. Nice Thank project. You. Thanks. Councilman Kiner, then Councilman Angaya. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I taught uh, U.S. history at Fermi High School for many years, and I retired, oh my God, a long time ago, and my regret about retiring is that I can't come to class every day and have students like you uh, sitting in my classroom challenging me and just making education, making teaching just a wonderful profession. So, Anna, congratulations on what you did. Thank you. Councilman, Councilman Ongar. Thank you for all your hard work. Uh, this really brings these people to life. They were human beings that really fought, and uh, it's a great gift to the town. Thank you very much. Come on up. I want to show everyone. Come on. Right. <laughs> you guys, you guys see here. Come on. 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 They presented to us at the, at the Memorial Day. I can't tell you, at the Memorial, Memorial Day Parade, I can't tell you how many people came up to me saying, wow, what a great idea. What a great idea. And again, so I want to, any myth out there that our kids aren't producing at a high level, eh, this shows you exactly how they're producing. They did a great job. We can't wait for this to come back in the fall. We're looking forward to wherever you folks decide. Any ideas where we're going to show all these? So our original goal was to have them in the actual neighborhoods where these men that research proved to be pretty difficult to actually pinpoint exactly where they lived in town. Um, but I've reached out to the engineer's office and we'll continue reaching out. Um, we've touched base with the beautification committee to try to figure out where exactly would be best, um, first of all, safely, people stopping and reading, and then secondly, where they're available for a good Very cool. Any, any words of uh, wisdom? Um, this was a lot of fun to make, so not only did it teach us something, but um, it was also a fun activity to do in school. Very cool. At the Memorial Day Parade. Yeah. Very good job. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Good job. Sorry, moving on to item number seven, public communications. At this time, would anyone like to speak for the public? Again, please keep per refrain from personalities. You get first time up five minutes, then three minutes after that. We have an hour, so it'll be done at 8.25. Mr. Young. Welcome, sir. Good evening, Council. Uh, George Young, 8 Holly Lane, Enfield, Connecticut. I want to give a summary of what I heard from the WPC meeting. First of all, uh, our revenues are going to be $7.2 million under the original proposed budget, and the expenses would be $5.5 million, which would leave us $1,750,000 approximately left over. 
from that, we decided not to do the road work of $500,000, reduce another $591,000 of plant construction. That would leave us $656,000 left over. From that, we were going to pay the town back $300,000, and I presume the rest would go towards reducing the, uh, the fund deficit. Well, since you decided to go from $36 and reduce it down to $30,000, I don't really know how many customers you have, but I'm going to give you a couple of examples. If, you can, if I go too fast, let me know. Uh, the impact of $6 reduction per quarter on approximately 10,000 customers would result in $60,000 a quarter or $240,000 a year. If, if what John said that we have about 14,000 of 3 8 customers, then maybe that figure becomes $84,000 a quarter and multiply that by four and you can see the impact. So if the town is going to get $300,000 back from that excess money, which we started with $656,000 from the original budget, but we're going to reduce it by six dollars that's two hundred forty thousand now the town's only left with four hundred sixteen thousand or the water pollution control is only left with four hundred sixteen thousand three hundred thousand is going back to pay the water pay the town for the loan that leaves us only about a hundred thousand dollars which is going to reduce the fund deficit i don't think you're going anywhere if you go to that other figure of fourteen thousand people 14,000 customers, then you aren't going to have anything reducing the fund deficit, okay? Just so you know where you are. So then uh, I probably have a couple other questions. When I go back to the water pollution control, is there a written agreement for this loan for the town? Because as John said, water pollution control operates out of business. So there should be an agreement. I presume there is. Is there an interest rate? indicated in the loan agreement or is it imputed and if so how much shouldn't the town collect interest on this loan since the WPC operates independently on a balance of about 2.5 million at 2% which is a pretty good rate that the town gets it will be another $50,000 that the town would be getting to reduce our mill rate and since that's about half of what you budget already for interest income for the town, uh, I think we're missing something here. I'd like to hear some comments on it later. If anyone is interested in doing that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, George. No one else like to speak for the council at this time? Karen. Karen LaPlante, 166 North Maple Street. Again, regarding the WPCA um, budget, this is a separate taxing entity. It's separate money from the town, should be kept separate, should be kept track of separately. Um, it's a $7 million budget, according to what you're looking at proposed for this year, this coming year. Nobody's got their finger on the pulse. Nobody knows, seems to know what the receivables are. The director of finance stated, it's hard to know the status of the receivables. He should be getting a report on a monthly basis of what the receivables are. Up to this point, nobody's been keeping track. Nobody's been collecting those past due bills. Now they're finally collecting them, and you've been able to collect $600,000 or more just this fiscal year extra. So it's finally being run properly, a little closer to properly, but nobody, I haven't heard who is in charge of this fund. And, and if you're paying back money, it should still be in the budget going towards a loan or something. You shouldn't have a difference of $1.7 million from the revenues to the expenses and the capital improvements. 
you're not showing that extra $500,000 anywhere. You're not showing the $591,000 in the Novak report. You're not showing that anywhere. And to me, you're just taking in that extra money and and you're not accounting for what you're doing for it. If I did that in the business world, it wouldn't, the IRS would be all over me. And, and you've got to account for this money. You've got to keep track of it. It's similar to what the fire districts, you know, they've got their budgets, they've got to manage. This is a separate fund you've got to manage. And to keep transparency, in this fund, this authority, this taxing authority, you need to properly do the business when you're in the WPCA, not when you're in the subcommittee of the public works, uh, town council people. It's the Water Pollution Control, control Authority. And that's when the business should be done for the authority, not with the town council. And, and I shouldn't even be saying this, I don't believe, at the town council meeting except that you're combining things and I don't think it should be combined. Thank you. Anyone else, anyone else like to speak for the council at this time? Anyone else like to speak for the council? Walter. Walter Cruzel, 21 Charlie Road. So I'm going to put my driver instructor hat on. I was at this uh, public hearing last week for our, from the state for our road diet that they want to do on Route 5. Problem is, the only reason they're bringing this thing up is people don't know how to drive. You have two lanes going north, you have two lanes going south. Let's just stick with the north first. Two lanes. The right lane is the, the travel lane. The left lane is the passing lane. Don't pass on the right. There's even signs that say that. Do not pass on the right. Don't hog the left lane. Simple concept, people. And that's why they want to change it. Everybody should be in the right lane. When you want to make a left-hand turn, you go in the left lane. When you come up to like the, the, the intersection here where there's three lanes, you got three directions, you got three lanes. It's simple, simple math, simple concept. Everybody drove the, the road correctly, we wouldn't have issues with state. And it's the same way coming south. You got a travel lane on the right, passing lane on the left. When you're done passing, you get back in the right lane. You don't hog the left lane. This is the same instant on Elm Street, and that's why the state looking to change these things. I'm not for it. I'm not against it. I'm more against it. I should say I am against it, but it, they're going to do it, whatever. But hopefully we, we have some say and we can get away with it, like we did with the rumble strips that they tried to put in. So I guess they do listen to us once in a while. And just wanted to say today was the last day of school, so I'll put my chairman hat back on. And hopefully all the kids will have a nice summer, and we'll see you back in August. Thank you. Thank you. No one else like to speak for the council at this time? Anyone else like to speak for the council for the first time? Bob. Bob T. Katz, 815 Woodgate Circle. I run into a business friend of mine from Mass Mutual, and I asked him the question, when are you going to be out of the state of Connecticut? He says, we'll be out of there by March of 2020. It's your largest taxpayer. Building one is three quarters empty. They still have a sales office in part of that building. So they're going to be leaving the state. So I don't know what prospects you guys have, any plans of finding a customer for that building. I haven't heard a word from the council or anybody on the next step in the plan. Um, I, I heard an in interview on the mayor of Danbury. He said he's got the fastest growing town in the state. They opened 900 new businesses last year. 
They have a fast track on a planning and zoning. You come in, 24 hours later, you got your approval, you can start building. They just approved a 60,000 square foot building in 24 hours. It seems like it takes 24 months to get something approved in Enfield. Talk about the Pride Station up there. They've been still working on it. We're talking about other businesses. Uh, <clears throat> down on King Street, the people that have that warehouse, the former Bernie's Warehouse, wanted to take over where Namco pulls. They wanted to put a rotor on the back, but the planning and zoning says, no, we're not going to do that. And they said, look, if you don't do it, the church is going to get it's going to be taken off the tax rolls. Well, the planning and zoning didn't listen. You know something? I listened to planning and zoning and the Zoning Board of Appeals. They're rude. They talk down to the people that are coming in Enfield. They don't welcome people in Enfield. you got to make a change on both of those boards and commissions. I would fire them all and get new people because exactly they give people a very difficult time and things have to change. Okay, New Haven Register had an article Friday about the Hamden School District was racially imbalanced, and they named the towns. <clears throat> and the towns are. And what happens when you're racially imbalanced? You're under the state, the state will take over state control and they'll change everything. So if you want to be independent, you're gonna have to racially balance the schools and you're gonna lose your grants, you're gonna lose all that extra money from the state. Greenwich, Norwalk, West Hartford, Groton, Vernon, Manchester, Glastonbury, Meriden, and Enfield. So we haven't heard a word from the council, the school board, the school superintendent about what he's gonna do about the racially imbalanced. We have no diversity in this town. If you look at all the people that are on the boards and commissions, we don't have diversity, and it's about time the council started appointing people of Latinos, Asian, black, to these boards and commissions. All you want to do is avoid doing that and facing up to the problems. Thank you. Enfield's got to change. Anyone else like to speak for the council this time? Anyone else like to speak for the first time? For the second time, Walter. Chairman Walter Cruzel, Board of Education, 21 Charney Road. Just got off the, uh, a text with our superintendent, and like I, like I thought, like our president says, fake news. It's an issue we've had, but we've worked through it. But like any newspaper, they don't want it to remove or do some research on what they're printing. So it is. it was an issue. It's been resolved. It was an issue in one school. It has been resolved since then. So it's been addressed. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Anyone else? Bob? Bob T. Katz, 815 Woodgate Circle. Here's another example of why we hide all these problems. We're not transparent here. We're opaque. Walter said there was a problem. It's not fake news. There was a problem. The, the, the school board, the school board chairman, the mayor, the town manager, has not brought this issue before the public and had it resolved. We have to stop hiding our problems and bring it out to the public. We hide everything here on this town council. Thank you. Murray. Marie Pisner, 25 Rory Street. I wasn't planning on talking, I have nothing prepared. However, on the theme of diversity, I think our town is very diverse. I grew up in this town. 
We've always had a diverse population. At one time, growing up right here in Thompsonville, there was a very high population of Puerto Rican because they came in and they took over the mill when it was closing, right before it closed. Those same people are still here. I'm friends with some of them still. As far as people being appointed, if people apply and people are qualified, people will be appointed. As far as our schools, my children have graduated, but I know their classrooms were diversified when they were there. My daughter's a teacher in town. Enfield is just not, and I hate to say this, but we're just not one color. And diversity comes not only in color, but it comes in faith. It comes in how we treat each other. We need to be nice. We just need to be nice and be honest. Enfield is not a bad town. And if you think it is, then you shouldn't live here. Because nobody's making you stay here. I come to these meetings to be inspired. I come to these meetings to hear what's going on. I don't come to these meetings to hear my town slandered. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council at this time? Anyone else? Declare public communications closed. Moving on to item eight, council communications. Any councilors? Councilor Kiner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to read just a short excerpt from an article that appeared in this morning's uh, yesterday's Hartford Current. And uh, Connecticut experts are increasingly worried about potential health and environmental risks of firefighting foam containing hazardous PFAS chemicals now being used and stored at more than 300 fire departments across the state. Jeff Morris said the state fire administrator said there is currently no way of knowing how much of this controversial chemical foam is being used to fight fires and for training firefighters in Connecticut. But environmental and health experts are certain that it's being used frequently in all parts of the state and can pose a serious risk to drinking water and the environment. PFAS compounds like those found in the firefighting foam that leaked into the Farmington River recently have been linked to reproductive problems, kidney cancer, and other illnesses. PFAS have been nicknamed forever chemicals because they persist in the environment and are very difficult to remove. Chris, I would just ask you um, to contact um, our fire districts and find out if they are indeed storing this chemical, are they using this chemical, and what safeguards are being used uh, to protect the public. Thank you. Councilor Ungar. Uh, I attended the adult ed graduation uh, last week, and I want to congratulate all those students. They worked very, very hard to get that degree. So congratulations to them and to all the students graduating from Enfield High tomorrow night at 7. Congratulations. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Councilor Davis. Okay, I'll start with the motion to suspend the rules and move items E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, Q, R, S to miscellaneous and proceed to vote. Motion to suspend the rules, move items to miscellaneous. Motion made by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Second. Second. Second by Councilor Sakala. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions? Nine in favor, zero against. Motion carries. You still okay. have the floor? I still have the floor. I guess if I can get an update on the resurfacing of the tennis courts to convert them on South Road to pickleball courts, it's getting to be that season. Um, also, um, let's see, also the, the spill, the paint spill on Hazard Avenue at the intersection of 190 and North, if there's any kind of update on that. Um, I also had the um, the pleasure of attending the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving, and they have a new foundation that's called Community Funds. They're going to seed money it with $2.9 million. That's $100,000 to each of the communities. Half will be an enterprise fund, and half will be for use today. 
what they're specifying is this will have a board that's I, I, it's, it's really difficult because I can't figure, we can't right now figure out who actually appoints them, but it will be a board of people that don't normally have a voice is how they phrased it in the community. And these different um, factions of the community or representation of parts of the community will be responsible for appointing the replacement members when the six, you can have different lengths of terms but only serve six years on this board and then someone will come in and take your place. And the funds will all be um, distributed by the Hartford Foundation for Giving so it will not be any kind of burden that the town will have to have. So, and I talked to Kasha about it and she's promised that she's going to go with me to the next meeting because I was like, um, I guess people don't realize we have so many things that we have to go to and sometimes we don't have very much background information except an email and we said oh yeah we'll go and then you get there and you find out there's you know a significant amount of information is coming forward and we have to now address this but I think it's great and I look forward to you know the next phase of that thank you Councilor Davis First, I want to thank everyone for coming to speak. George, thank you for speaking. Karen, Walter, Bob, Maria. Uh, through the mayor to the town manager, someone can answer some of George's questions on the WPCA and then some of Karen's. I don't know if you have them. Like ones that are WPCA paying interest to the town for the loan that they're repaying was one of the questions they wanted to answer. And Karen was wondering who's in charge of the W. PCA funds, like who's in charge of tracking everything that we're doing. So I just don't know if, through your report, if someone could just answer them because they asked if they can get them answered. Um, Bob, thank you for coming up and uh, speaking. And, you know, it, it is, a, we have a diverse town. Is everybody accepted? No, I don't believe so. But if you're a white, straight person, I guess you don't have any issues in town. So I do know plenty of people that do. Is Enfield great? Yes. So if someone doesn't agree with something going on in Enfield and they're stepping up to try to make it better, they shouldn't have to leave our town. They have a right to live here and make it better. So I just want to clear that up. We do too have an issue and we need to unite and go through it. So it's not fake news. So again, Bob, thank you for bringing it up because it's been brought up on the Board of Ed side too. Thank you. Councilor Bosco. Yeah, it's, um, through the mayor and town manager, uh, I attended uh, truck, touch a truck day this weekend. It was a great, uh, great thing attended by a lot of kids. I mean, I had kids in and out of my trucks all day and they, they really had a good time. But uh, Bob brought it up to me. We had uh, a catch basin in the parking lot of the library that actually the top has been all deteriorated and there's an actual hole going in through the side where the the basin the top of the basin is actually starting to collapse so we need to go take a look at that and, and get a new cover put on that um, then to Bob we we realized a while ago we have a problem with PNC and the boards that's why we put we're putting qualified people on no no longer just because somebody uh, knows somebody or uh, could be whatever you want if you're not qualified we don't want you on no more and that's the only way you're going to have be able to fix this problem uh, so we are working on that the, the thing is there's terms and you can't just kick somebody off if their terms not up so things take turn take time and it's going to depend on the next council to put the next batch of people that are going to represent us on PNZ. So that that's that. Uh, oh God ahead. Oh, to Karen. Me, I probably would be in the minority, but I think that we should have a water pollution control committee. I, I, I don't want to be sitting here because I don't know enough. And what happens is, is, you know, we have so many other things that we may not be doing things exactly the way it should be uh, you know you take, going back to the PNZ you really want to have people that know 
have more knowledge when they're doing something than me. So uh, I, I, I would much rather see that thing split off and out of our hands and as somebody else's. But you know that that that's that's up to eleven people to make that decision. And uh, other than that, that's what I have to say. Thank you, Councilor Muller. Through the mayor to the town manager, the, uh, there's a on Broadbrook Road. There's a mattress and box spring across from number 28. It's been there for about a week. Would you like it? Is that no. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> and I got a call on a blighted property, Seven Perry Lane. Is there a delivery service for that? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, Council Farraza, then Council. Oh, you okay, Council Ungar? I just wanted to re remind parents uh, with the summertime coming up that the students may have more time on their hand that the lending library of instruments is over at the Enfield Public Library. So they've got a great group of instruments that are available to lend out. And so if you're interested in picking up uh, an instrument, now's a good time to go check out what they have and take them out. Thanks. Anyone else? I said two quick things. I want to congratulate Nell, the lovable St. Bernard, as the new dog mayor of Enfield. Probably will do a better job than myself, since she is a lovable St. Bernard. It's a beautiful dog. You didn't get a chance to see it online. And Freddie for as a deputy mayor. So uh, it was a great event, and you know we definitely are a dog town. Having said that, also want to let folks know if you if there is you know um, you know abandoned cat or, or cats you know maybe running in the neighborhood, we do have a, what's called the Enfield Community Cat Project. Great group of gals who are running that who care very deeply about cats. It's a website, it's a nonprofit organization. And again, if there is a, any abandoned cats, please feel free to reach out to them and they will help you. Okay, great group of pre people. Last thing, I know you're probably gonna touch on this in your uh, town manager report, but just a kind of a timeline as, as we know it to the, to the, to the Route 5 real, or restriping, we'll call it, you know, because that's what it is. I know there's a public hearing on Wednesday. I, I will, unless you want, I can defer to you, in your, with your comments. You know, for the kind of next steps, sure. you know, and um, but again, it was a very robust public hearing, and folks did a really good job. And I'll just say, yeah, you know, in particular, the group of bus drivers who showed up had a very compelling argument, as did everyone else. But again, they did a really good job, the, our bus drivers. So uh, I know you'll comment on the next steps, but I just want to let, let them know publicly. Um, having said that, let's move on to item number nine, the town manager report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In regard to a lot of the uh, questions, some we have answers for this evening. We have a very robust agenda, and I have a, a, a full report under manager. In regard to water pollution control, as we've done in the past, Mr. Young and Karen's questions, I'll have Mr. Wilcox respond to those in writing and share them with the council. Uh, in regard to some of the public works matters, last meeting we had some inquiries. Mr. Nunes has responded. He sent the emails to me this afternoon. I'll share those with the council as well. But he addressed all the matters that were brought up at the last meeting. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know if you have any questions on the PAR. This month the PAR was uh, provided. Again, it uh, has a lot of uh, valuable information and gives a lot of updates for the projects and activities of all of our departments, and I recommend it to you and to uh, those uh, at home to take a look at it. I'll give uh, a report today in our continued efforts uh, with CROG and partners along uh, 91 North up to our border. Uh, they met with the governor this morning. Um, all the member towns that are slated for a train station, including Enfield, it was a very productive meeting. Lori Witten went, um, and I think there was a lot of valuable information transmitted to the governor that he was unaware of, particularly in, in how far Enfield's come, how much money's been invested uh, with our efforts for a train station and most recently for a platform uh, on the interim until that station is uh, uh, comes to fruition. So that was time well spent. We'll keep you posted as to developments there. Um, this evening we were slated to have the FBI and our U.S. Attorney and law enforcement partners here, um, but at the last minute our U.S. Attorney John Durham 
uh, was called to Washington. Uh, so we reached out to his office. They believe he'll be able to make it. His schedule uh, provided for the July 1st meeting. I think it'll be very informative and uh, the anticipation builds. We know he's involved in national issues. We're fortunate to have him as our U.S. attorney. And we thought it'd be best to wait and see if he could come with the FBI, our state's attorney and chief of police next time. So we'll keep you updated. Again, we were ready to send out the press release and his office told us he was called to D.C. So we'll keep you uh, informed, hopefully July 1st. Um, in regard to the road diet route five in keeping with our practice uh, such as we did with the um, south river street bridge there was the public hearing which was conducted by the dot as the mayor said well attended uh, many residents commented we will as we did with the south river street bridge now invite them to the council meeting for august 1st so that the whole council would be able to hear um, and if they deign to come we're also going to make an effort uh, to those residents on Route 5 that are directly affected, about 100 residents, to reach out to them and let them know of the meeting um, so that they might have another opportunity to come if they didn't make the last one. So, again, that will be going out this week, and we'll keep you apprised as to whether or not they want to come and make a presentation at the 6 to 7 uh, o'clock special meeting August 1st, um, or the first meeting in August. I don't know if it's the first or not. Um, in regard to, uh, we'll do an update. And from week to week, we had promised in regard to the Head Start Stowe program, merger as it were. Um, we meet every Monday, as I said, on the town side and with our partners in regard to the physical plant and the logistics, and I have some updates. Uh, we had talked about the issue of air conditioning, which we are addressing, two prong. One, uh, we had the quotes, and we'll have it on the next agenda in July to pay for the temporary air conditioning that will be uh, in place for August 15th of this year at a cost of about $14,400, and we've identified funding for that within our rental account. Uh, that will be a placeholder. We have now received a quote uh, from a really premier um, outfit, the carrier, which is well known in air conditioning, in regard to what the permanent solution will be, the 30-ton unit, which we will uh, be employing for next summer. Uh, their bid, and we still have two others that are out there, but their quote uh, was $210,000, and that's for the permanent a solution of a 30-ton unit to address, and we would have that available. Just to remind you all, we have $145,000 available from Honeywell um, previously, so the lion's share of that is already funded, and John has identified the funding in the contingency for the balance of about $65,000. We'll address that next uh, for the next season. But that was very, very good news. Uh, the parking, again, as we've said, the additional uh, spots at the facility of about 104 additional identified by Mr. Nunes in his uh, presentation last meeting. Uh, likewise, the total cost is estimated at about $130,000. 100000 of that is being funded by transferring uh, bus costs to the facility that the, uh, the Board of Education, Mr. Dresick, is going to be taking over our $100,000 that we put in the budget, freeing that money up for this project. And we've identified the $30,000 balance as well to complete that by the school opening, uh, hopefully around August 15th. We've looked also at storage, storage, storage. Um, Inside the That's building. That's in August as well in, in South, South Dakota. And outside, um, we've identified all of that. It's been vetted with the fire marshal. Uh, the plan is, is to be in place. We have the funding for that as well that the Board of Ed's paying. There will be some outside uh, storage and also uh, interior storage. Um, we also, the other costs, we've identified pretty much all of the costs we think will be associated in funding sources for them, uh, including dividers, about $10,000 in the gymnasium, uh, freezer for the kitchen, some other storage cabinets. Uh, all of that funding has been identified uh, between us and the Board of Ed and is in place. Um, so I think that's good news. We're on track. As I said, we met this morning. We'll meet every Monday until the conclusion and implementation. As the mayor said, that's the toughest part. I would also like to just state that on the other side, on Fridays, um, we issue a, a, a little flyer uh, from the Head Start and the Stowe people just to give an update more on the other, the, I, I guess I've termed it in artfully, I've, I've, in, I've gotten the ire of some people apparently. Um, I'm not trying to encroach on the Board of Education or the superintendent's job. Um, we're busy enough here doing the town side. Um, but at the risk of offending anybody, I'll just tell you that the meeting that occurs every Friday uh, over there at the facility to talk about the curriculum and the programming itself and classrooms and all of that, the brain part of the operation. I'm just going to tell you who attends so that you know we do have quite a 
representative group there of all those who are stakeholders in this project. We have the er early childhood development teachers and teachers assistants. We have the early childhood development center administration. We have the town administration led by Kasha and then public works people as needed. We have the Head Start teachers and teachers assistants. We have the Head Start managers who attend. The integrated pre-kindergarten teachers and paraprofessionals. The preschool STEAM teachers and teachers assistants. The preschool STEAM administration. Kite leadership. Family Resource Center leadership. The Enfield Public Schools Partnership Coordinator and Family Engagement Specialist, and the Enfield Public Schools Director of Pupil Services. And the report we receive on Monday morning from that, and I received it this morning from Jacqueline Valley, who's the interim Head Start uh, Director, and from Kasha, is that the entire group remains excited, committed, and optimistic about this merger and that it will be in the best interest of all those involved uh, for all of those children that will be impacted. So that's my report in regard to that. And we'll continue to update as we progress through the summer. Did I cover everything? Are there any questions? Any questions from anyone? You know, Chris, just, just for the record, for everyone to know about the restriping slash road diet, sort of just the process, we were contacted by the state at first, we were kind of told that this was going to occur, oh. but would we would we want a public hearing? Came before I, uh, you can so Councillor Denny, Councillor Bosco, myself. It came before the subcommittee of the public safety, through our traffic coordinator and chief of police. We said, of course, we want a public hearing, and then we were told, okay, maybe this is the project's going to be delayed, or it's it's I want to say delayed, or maybe it's a little farther way off, so there's no need. Then we were told we were, we needed a public hearing, so of course, again, we requested a public hearing. At the public hearing, again, well attended. Uh, and I thought people did a great job. The state did a good job as well. I mean, they did a really nice presentation. I, I will say um, they made public comments that it was they wanted an endorsement by the town council before they would go forward with any diet slash restriping. You know, and that's what you mentioned about inviting him back so folks can hear if they haven't seen the presentation that was sent to them by Deb or you know, Deb McCarthy they can make you know they if they're welcome to come back there you are and then we would based on timing if we decide to you know endorse it or not endorse it, it would be right yeah. my point and I, I thank you and I'll clarify just like in the South Bridge they made their public hearing and then they said they would like a, a commitment and a resolution by the council um, and much like that in this case they initially had said they were doing this um, then they asked if we'd like a public hearing we said yes now they have also said they'd like a resolution in support so we'll invite them whether or not they come they still would like that resolution of an affirmative vote of the council if they're going to proceed so uh, we'll follow the same um, just want to make sure people procedure. are clear that no process. thank you because yeah. I didn't I didn't make that clear uh, I'd also like to just say in regard to any statements about uh, the, the town or and my friend Bob mentioned that I haven't or we haven't been uh, transparent I don't know what he's talking about if any issue comes before the council, I'm unafraid to bring it to you or to the public. If you look at our town manager report, I think we've done more public presentations on issues than any other council has done in the last 10 years. So in regard to anything uh, with race or gender or inclusion, if there's something specific that I need to be made aware of, please bring it to my attention. Otherwise, I resent any aspersions on this council or me that there's something out there lurking that we are covering up or conspiring to keep from the people of Enfield. I don't want anybody to be left with that. I'd rather not even address it because I usually like to hear what Bob has to say, but I'm surprised by those comments and I just wanted to clarify the record because it ain't so. Thank you. Any other questions for the town manager? Moving on to the town attorney's report, item number nine. Uh, 10, excuse me, item 10, sorry. Good evening, everyone. I have no formal report. Any questions for the town attorney? I, I, I Paul, I mean, any chance we can just on, on a, the comment of just the, you know, the uh, the opioid, you know, what we get the the news, just the latest, just so people know. Well, we did have Scott and Scott file on behalf of the town okay. of Enfield, and that lawsuit was um, in state court. However, there was an attempt to remove it, and it was successful into the federal court. And at this point, that's where it is. So there's not too much more to update you on. Okay. Thank you. You're Moving on to item 11, report of special committees. Councillor Muller. 
JFK Building Committee met. There's an update. There was three RFPs for CMR. There's also some key event dates that I'd like to read into the record. There's a mandatory walkthrough this Thursday, June 20th. A deadline for any questions is Thursday, June 27th. The interviews and selections will be Saturday, July 13th. The construction manager risk selection notification date will be Wednesday, July 17th. The construction start date will be April 2020. And the construction completion is anticipated August 1st, 2022. Thank you. Any questions on that? Thank you. Any other reports? Deputy Mayor Suzak. Facilities will meet on Thursday, and the bids are coming in on the 18th for the Phase 2 Henry Barnard School. Keep your fingers crossed that, you know, we're, we're in our, within our budget. We're looking for something, you know, around 850 because that's all we can spend, and then or we'll have to break it up into um, a third phase, which would be a little bit more work, but we'll still get it done. And then I saw on the par that the Hazardville Memorial Playscape uh, opened on the 6th. We'll have to thank the Recreation um, Committee, who for six years worked on getting Playscapes in line for all the schools. And I guess um, these won't be paid for till like, what, 2023? But in the meantime, what we need to do is recreation maybe needs to get together so we can do analysis of town needs for Playscape so we can kind of evaluate what do we need. And I think in that light, we maybe should be starting to look at probably basketball courts. And of course, we're converting the tennis courts to the pickleball center on South Road. So there's always something new and different going on in Enfield. Thank you. Any other reports of the special committees? Hearing on moving to item 12, old business. We have none on A, under A, one and two. Moving on to page two, under old business. I, let me make sure I have the, which number is it? It's not highlighted for me. One no, sec, one sec. Three. Three, um, item three. We have a, not, do, we have a, do we have a motion to move item three off the table? So moved. Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councilor Muller. All those by show of hands. Eight in favor, zero against. We have a nomination for for our Enfield Beautification Committee. Todd so. Someone. Todd, Todd Barisol, thank you. Motion yeah. by yeah by Deputy Mayor Muller. Second. Seconded by Councilor Spraza. Do we have a motion to close nominations? So moved. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Second. By Councilor Muller. All those in favor of closing nominations. Opposed. Nine in favor, zero against. This is for a reappointment. Any discussion on the main motion to reappoint? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Kiner is out at the moment. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Sferraza? Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Todd Barcelo? Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Sakala? Todd? Four. Yeah, whatever his last name is. Councillor Davis? Four. Councillor Kiner, would you like to? Place a vote for four. Thank you. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Items four, five, and six remain on the table. Item seven, and Enfield Culture Arts, Culture and Arts Commission, uh, reappointment. Do I have a motion to remove from the table? By Councillor Muller. Second by Deputy Mayor Suzak. All those in favor of removing from the table by show of hands. Opposed? Any abstentions? Nine in favor, zero against. Do I have a nomination, please? Deputy Mayor Suzak. Marguerite French. I have a nomination. Do I have a second? Second. By Councillor Sakala. Do I have a motion to close nominations? Mm -hmm. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Seconded by Councillor Ungar. All those in favor of closing nominations by a show of hands. Nine in favor, zero against. Any discussion on the main motion? Again, a reappointment. Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Kiner? Four. Thank you. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Sferraza? Deputy Mayor Suzak. Marguerite French. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Marguerite French. Councillor Davis. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Items eight, eight through 16 on page two remain on the table. Moving over to the top of page three, town manager appointments, items one through 14. Are there any? There are none. Moving over to the top of page four. Um, again, appointments by P&Z, 
B and Z commission appointed, council approved. We have none. Item D, school roofs stay on the table. Item 13, new business, there is no consent agenda under item A. Item B, items one stay on the table. Do we have a, a, a motion for item two? Do we have a nominee, excuse me. Do we have a nomination for item two? Maurice LaRosa. Have a nomination? No. no. Jason Walsh. I have a nomination of Jason Walsh. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Do we have a motion to close nominations? Motion to close. Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councilor Muller. All those in favor of closing nominations by a show of hands. Opposed? <laughs> Nine in favor, zero against. Do we have any discussion on the main motion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Sferraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Jason Walsh. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Sakala. Jason Walsh. Councilor Davis. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Under our new business, item 13C, town manager, council approved, items one and two, we have none. Item D, appointments, P and Z commission appointed, council approved, we have none. Item 14, items for discussion. A, consent agenda, again, we have none. Item B, appointments, town council appointed, we have none. Item C, appointments by the town manager, we have none. Item D, appointments, P and Z commission appointed, council approved, again, we have none. Items E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T have been moved to miscellaneous. R was not moved. It was not in the resolution. Uh, oh, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It is. Yeah. okay. So now we move to items from item 15 for miscellaneous. Uh, item E. I'm sorry. Um, okay, we have items. I'm no, sorry. It still, should not be the piece. All right, sorry. All right, yeah. Fine. Yep. My motion is fine. Yeah. Okay. Now moving over to item F. Excuse me. Item E under miscellaneous request for transfer of funds for the Department of Public Works Division, thirty thousand dollars. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter Six, Section Eight F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made. From department to the Department of Public Works overtime, thirty thousand dollars from the Department of Public Works, no plow contractors of fifteen thousand, ground services of fifteen thousand, certified that the above funds are available on June 7, 2019, by John Wilcox, the Director of Finance, and approved by Chris Bronson, town manager, on six on June 10, 2019. So moved. By Deputy Mayor, I mean excuse me, by Councilor Muller, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. I know one. Donald's here, yep. as the council is well aware, uh, in this budget year, like last, overtime was reduced, even though last year's was significantly less than the fiscal year before. Uh, they tried to be prudent with the expenditures, but due to a confluence of storms on holidays and weekends, uh, it exceeded it. I think they were good stewards of the money, but they're here to answer questions in regard to the... So if you could, just a brief, I mean, because this, I think, was important. I know, I don't want to speak for Councillor Sakala and myself, but during a budget, the overtime, you know, just a little how closely you folks have managed it. I mean, I think it's important for people to understand that we're not just, again, approving overtime. There's some thought to it. There's some requests from your office and to the town manager through the council. Maybe just a little general on a process and why this is needed. Because again, this is, this is the point where we'd like to have you come before us when there's legitimate reasons why we need overtime. And I think this is one of them. But just sort of if you could, just a little so people sure. know that Again, this isn't something that, okay, we, we didn't manage our budget tightly, and then so now we're asking for money. Right. So for buildings and grounds, we do ask, I, I do come to, to Chris, who didn't go to ask leadership and whatever. Just, again, we, we, it's not automatic anymore. Before right. we had that luxury of coming in, the XAB and G always came in on Saturdays and on Sundays. <laughs> it, was, it was a luxury thing. They just came in, we did it, and we moved on. But now it's not like that. So now we have for the vetting process where, again, uh, Mark R will come to me. Then I'll make the decision whether to go to, to Chris, and we can we can go from there. Uh, this one for highway is a little different. Again, our storms this year weren't we didn't have much snow, but it fell on Sundays and it fell on Monday holidays, and we got we got creamed with it. I mean, basically for that. So um, through my first winter here, I've made some controversial decisions on sending guys home, not keeping them again because there was some sometimes again. Um, Guys, when we keep guys over to sleep, we, we still pay them because that's the union rules and that's what we do. But we have really worked tightly to, to try to get things better, try to make things more efficient. 
everything from calibrating our machines better to again, just really watching the storms and just doing things a lot differently that we weren't accustomed to before. So um, we, this 30,000, we, we were lucky that it was only this. Again, uh, we did save some money from the snowplow contractors. We didn't have to, there was smaller storms. There wasn't as many bigger storms. So we had to call them in. So that's where some of that money was coming from to help fund this. So we're, again, we're, yep. we are trying to manage it correctly. Thank you. Any questions for Donald? Council Sparraza. I only really have a question, Donald. I just want to tell you that um, you were budgeted this year about $67,000 less than what you actually spent the year before. And despite that, um, with this $30,000, you're still about $35,000 less than last year. Yes. I know as an administrator that doesn't happen by chance. You guys are doing a good job of watching it, and I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Gina? No. I'm good. No, again, I, I, pre again, I want people to understand that, again, it's not just yes and then we figure it out. You folks are actually putting some thought into trying to do some things differently where we can save money, and it's not just we're going to pay overtime. And I think, I think the Council Shiraz's point, you guys really done a good job on this, and that was the whole point of what we went through last budget. Which again it was painful. There's no doubt about it. I mean, we, there was tough discussions, but I think you know you guys have done a good job again of managing your money tightly, and uh, and I just want people to understand that because it's not just to your point. We say yes, and then it's no. There's some thought process and some checks and balances before it even gets to Chris. Yes. Yeah. So again, thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments? Hearing on roll call, please. Councilor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Sferraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Davis. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, gentlemen. We move on to item G. Re request of transfer, excuse me, item G, item F, sorry. Request of transfer for funds for fire protection of 43,000, again under miscellaneous. Um, Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made. Two unallocated charges, water sewer of 43000 from unallocated charges contingency of 43000 certified that the above stated funds are available as, June, as of June 7, 2019 by John Wilcox, the Director of Finance, approved by Christopher Bromson, the Town Manager, on June 10, 2019. By Councillor Muller. Second. Seconded by Councillor Angara. So this is, uh, you're more than welcome to comment on this one as we move forward. <laughs> I just jump right into it. What we, okay, again, yeah, people this, want transparency, this is what we're talking yeah, about. This uh, Hazard of Water uh, <clears throat> gave us that, they, they bill us twice a year. Um, and Michael, who's our, again, TVW's business manager, we collectively were in shock with, again, with that, the amount that was upcharged. So we were factoring in, uh, I think it was 2.5%. I think. I think two, yeah, which has been a standard rate, 2.4, and it came in at 11.7. So this kind of took us all by surprise. So this is the money, this is the extra money that they were charged, and we just don't have that in your, our accounts right now. Any questions from anyone? So, so again, I, I want to be transparent. How much more is this in total than the actual charge? So what, what's the aggregate charge that the water, this flows into what account? Oh, oh. I don't have that number. Do have that? Doesn't ask for the water unallocated. Somewhere at 1.1, 1.2, somewhere. Million dollars, right? All right. Somewhere in that neighborhood, yes. And so, so can we? I don't know if we're going to vote on this tonight. I mean, does it make sense to wait till we invite? You know, uh, maybe we can invite the fire chiefs to come for this. That's up to you. As you said, um, the total uh, fire protection charge that we're discussing here is north of a million two a year. I know we've had discussions about it. Um, if you'd like to invite them to come uh, to discuss it as a larger issue, but we just have to have this additional uh, payment made by the end of the fiscal year. So the end so of the fiscal year is the pleasure of the council. Yeah. So the, this, if this, when this, if this transfer goes through, this will, will still square us up and pay us for Connecticut water for the up until June thirtieth. Right. So seven. So we need be, this. So seven we need, one would actually be in the next fiscal year. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. That's what I would need to understand. But so I think Gina's right. We I think we do need to pay oh, yes. this year. But then we yeah. can we invite them for August or September. Certainly. Yep. Any other questions or comments, Council Sparraza? 
Donald, for the for the uh, benefit of the people watching at home and everything, could you just very simply state what this payment is going towards, this million dollars? What is this for? All right. So both Connecticut Water and Hasville Water charge the town um, for having fire protection. So anything above a four-inch water main in the street, um, Hasville Water charges by inch foot. So if it's a six-inch pipe, they should charge a little more than a, charge a little more than a four and an eight, and, and so on and like that. Connecticut Water goes just by lineal foot above a four-inch line, and that is for getting the water into the mains and up to the up to the fire hydrants for fire protection, all on pu on public property. We so, do so so to be transparent, the town's going to pay this million to uh, over a million dollars to maintain the fire hydrants and that is a cost that we're paying this year we have paid it in the past and it's necessary to maintain fire protection yes this is the the fire protection just the supply of the of the water to those pipes to the hydrant okay thank you no one else have any questions okay all set <clears throat> Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Kiner? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Sferraza? Four. Count Deputy Mayor Suzak? Four. Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Councillor Bosco? Councillor Sakala? Four. Councillor Davis? Four. There's nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Moving on to item G. Under miscellaneous, request for transfer of funds for public works building and grounds of 175000 Resolved in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfers hereby made. To Department of Works, Building and Grounds, Natural Gas, 175000 From Department of Public Works Administration, Other Professional Services, 104588 From al unallocated uh, charges, contingency, 70412 Certification <coughs> that the above funds are available on June 7, 2019 by John Wilcox, the Director of Finance. Approved by the Town Manager, Christopher Bromson, on June 10, 2019. So by Councilor Muller. Seconded by Councilor Sferraza. Right, sir. All right. Uh, so Mike, Michael Slazik is our business manager, and he's done a lot of research in the last week or so to really kind of get a grip of, of where, where we are right now with this and, and why it is that the funding that we're asking for right now. So again, I will turn the mic over to him. And again, who's, he's done a lot of work with Mark, Mark R himself, and um, all of our admins for this. So welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the, the deficiency really comes from three different things. First off, the account wasn't properly funded in the first place um, with the Honeywell project. I think uh, we were over, overly optimistic. Everybody in the process was overly optimistic. Uh, we had used 669000 last year in this account, it was budgeted at 613. Uh, we, we didn't have a full year's, or we didn't have that full year's when we did the budgeting. We thought it would come in a little lower last year, uh, but we had enough to cover it. Uh, Mark initially requested a level funding of $840,000, and that was dropped severely in the, in the budgetary process. Uh, that also, I mean, if we had had adequately uh, budgeted at something similar to last year, we'd still be in trouble. And that's for a couple of other reasons. Usage of natural gas is up because the, uh, the buildings are being used more on the weekend. Uh, we've seen that, uh, we reviewed the, the uh, building management system uh, this morning with, uh, uh, with buildings and grounds. Uh, we've added a lot of weekend hours, and we've also raised the temperature in a lot of buildings because people were complaining that it was too cold. So all of that brought up the, the usage. Uh, finally, the costs are up. Um, supply costs are up a bit for gas this year, and also the fixed distribution charges are up 7.7 percent. So it's, it's a perfect storm. It's um, cost increases from three different sources. Uh, we've also got a new charge on it this year, a gas system improvement charge. It's not big, but it accounts for another 1 or 2 percent of the gas bill. It all is added up, and unfortunately, it's added up to quite a bit of money. 
Uh, I just want Michael to talk about, he showed me a bill today that we actually reduced our usage by 12%. I have the bill. Um, well, Michael can talk about it then. So, sure. um, One of our most recent bills that is still outstanding is from, uh, is from April of this year. Uh, we used, last year we used 8,770 uh, uh, cubic feet of gas at Fermi. This year we used 700, 650 cubic feet of gas at Fermi, uh, 1,100 cubic feet less, substantially less, 13, 12.8% less. In spite of that, the bill, even though we used 12%, 12.8% less gas, uh, has gone from $6,949 to $7,000. $783, so less usage, more money, and that's one of the reasons, that's a good example of why the costs have gone up so much. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, no. no and it's, it's interesting, I mean, again, utilization goes down, cost goes up. I, what was, I, I'm Paul, I, Eversource was like 19%, I think it was, right? Wasn't, is this part of their... Yes, that, it's ever they had source. a huge, some humongous utility increase. Yes. So even when you actually, again, manage, again, when utilization goes down, in theory, your costs are supposed to go down, no matter what it is in your line of work. It just goes to tell you when you actually reduce utilization, yet costs go up. Yeah, it's, it's a little unnerving as we move forward. And again, this is the point of, and, and you know, when we made these the decisions through the budget, is that, again, you're willing to come in public, which I know years ago was, oh, you never come back and talk about asking for more money or why it didn't happen, but that's exactly what we're trying to do here, is be transparent, things happen, what happened, be able to explain it, and then make a decision, right? And I think that's, so I, again, I appreciate the fact you're giving information, that's important. That's not just we're mismanaging your money. Utilization went down, costs go up. That math shouldn't work that way in any line of business, but it does with a utility. And I think that's why it's important for this to happen the way it is. And again, I appreciate the fact you're here, because this goes to show how we're trying to manage every dollar as tightly as we can. And even when you do that, unfortunately, sometimes it still does go in the wrong direction. And I know no one likes to hear that, but that's the reality of what we're, you know, sometimes we're dealing with, especially with the utility. You know, and I think that's why this is important information, especially, again, un uh, people understanding that usage, listen, we're, no, usage just, we just, we're just not turning buildings on, leaving running all, all weekend long. We're actually trying to manage it pretty tightly. So I think this is important information. I appreciate the fact that you're doing it this way. This was and the point of what we did last year in a budget. And we tried to compare apples to apples, right. the usage and the facilities. But I, I would make note, although we're not penalized by Honeywell in regard to decreased usage, this ties into the next phase. We looked at field usage, and now we're looking at facility usage. Uh, and what we charge <clears throat> of our buildings. You've got to understand, when you have a building that's normally closed on a Saturday, and now we open it in January for somebody to do a dinner or a lunch, that we have to heat it up to that temperature and then keep it there for a couple of hours, the cost, you can see, is very high, and we're charging $100, and people are asking us to forgive that. So you're really going to have to look at that carefully to see the cost-benefit analysis, because we're seeing that, we're trying to do a usage of it and across the board, but when people say we want to use this building and you know we're, we're a nonprofit, and they are, they're doing it for good purposes, but there is a cost, so you've got to decide is that something that we want to fund? Um, but really, I would have to just say to you that it's a minimal what we get, because we're just trying to now cover custodial for the time it's open, but a far greater cost, as you can see, is, is the fuel uh, to heat it. So we'll be making that report. We started those meetings as the next phase of looking at the usage of all of our buildings, including the schools, to outside groups, and we'll, we'll have a report for you in a couple of months. Deputy Mayor Suzak. And I just, you know, I think sometimes people, um, they have to remember with the Honeywell, we're just guaranteed a savings in energy. It's not a dollar savings because, as we're seeing here, we do have a savings in energy. Some could be attributing to Honeywell. Some could be just attributed to good work by our staff. So we get that save. That's what we're, that's the whole goal is that our carbon footprint goes down and we have less usage. So. We've done what we're supposed to be doing, and unfortunately. We'll to, I, I'm um, welcoming the facility 
study of the consultant of which buildings we should keep and usage, but I will just let you know that we did last year for the council, we looked at the cost of operating the annex. Yeah. And it's very, very costly. People assume, well, we closed the building. We did not. And the cost for custodial and heating is probably almost a million dollars a year. And Mr. Kiner went and he was impressed, but also surprised by the scope and, and, and uh, of what we're doing there. And a lot of it's taking place on weekends and in the cold months, and it, they're all laudable, worthwhile programs, but there's a significant cost associated. So we just have to be, again, we're trying to be transparent, and we supplied those numbers to the council, but it's it's about a million dollars a year. Right. So the and building's far from closed. Right, and that's why we're trying to hope that if we can get rid of some of the satellite buildings and maybe offer them and maybe make a robust, more robust at the annex. and. That's going to be up to the experts to tell us if it's easier to operate 10 buildings or it's better to operate one. Thank you, gentlemen. Roll call, please. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Terraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item H under miscellaneous, resolution authorizing the town manager to sign the lease agreement with the Hazville Institute Conserv Conservancy Science, Inc., whereas the town owns the two landlocker parcels located in the Hazville section of Enfield, which parcels are shown as lots 357 and 251 in the assessor's map 83, also known as the properties, and whereas the conservancy would like to have the access to and use of the properties for a period commencing on the effective date of this license agreement until June 30, 2021 for the parking of motor vehicles related to its planned renovations and improvements to the Hasville Institute building at 317 Hazard Ave, also known as the Institute. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Enfield Town Council authorized the town manager to sign a leasing agreement with the Hasville Institute Conservancy Inc. Society, Inc., prepared by Nelson Teresa, Director of Deputy Director of Economic and Community Development on May 9, 2019. By Councilor Muller. Second. By Deputy Mayor Suzak. Any questions on this one? Councilor Davis. Uh, so to, so to sign the lease, so I'm just wondering how much are they paying for the, to, for the lease, for the use of the stuff? How much does the town make? Like what are we charging them? Uh, Nelson can address that. I think this was done a couple of years ago, but I don't believe they ever put a payment in for this. It's two landlocked pieces. I don't even know what the. Yeah, I'm just wondering because yep. the question. Good evening, will Nelson Terezo, Office of Community Development. Uh, this is a uh, extension on a license agreement. Uh, currently, there is no cost on this agreement. It's just to provide access to town-owned property in the back of the uh, Hazardville Institute for contractors to utilize the area for parking. Currently, there's no fee being charged uh, for this agreement. All right, thank you. I just want to make sure it was said. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions? Hearing on roll call, please. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Sferraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. It is nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Okay, moving on to item my resolution authorizing the town manager and his desi and his designee to sign a Connecticut State Department of Education Child and Adult Care Food Program CACFP agreement. Uh, sorry, one second. Whereas the CACFP is a federal program through the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and whereas the CACFP provides reimbursement for meals and snacks to infants, children, and seniors attending the Child Development Center and the Adult Day Center, and whereas the CACFP agreement requires two auth authorized signers, now therefore be resolved that the town manager Christopher W. Bronson and his designee are authorized to sign the CACFP agreement with the Connecticut State Department of Education in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield, subject to review and approval by the town attorney, submitted on June 17, 2019 by Damon Humphrey, the Acting Director of Social Services. So Councillor Muller by Councillor Ungar. This is basically just to change signatures, right? Correct. So I don't you had need to, to do steal your thunder, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> that is correct. Good evening. Uh, my name is Damian Humphrey, Acting Director of Social Services for the Town of Enfield. And yes, uh, you're correct, Mayor. This is to uh, change the name from the previous uh, 
town manager to the current town manager to give uh, town manager Christopher Bromson uh, and his designee to uh, sign the contracts for reimbursement. Any questions for anyone? It's an easy one for you. I like the easy ones. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> Roll call, please. Councillor Kiner. Yes, four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Sferaza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Okay, moving on to item J resolution authorizing the Senior Center Recreation Program Coordinator job description. I got, yeah, I got the right one. Sorry about that. Thought I was in all right. Resolve in the accordance of Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby adopt the new job description for the position of Senior Center Recreation Program Coordinator, submitted on June 3rd, 2019, by Steve Belinda, Director of Human Resources. Councilor Muller? Second. By Deputy Mayor Suzak. Director Welcome, Jason sir. Neely is here if you have any questions on this. Gotcha. Better? Okay. So uh, this particular job description is an update to the uh, position that was formerly the craft coordinator at the senior center with the reorganization and the reduction in staffing. That person needed to take on far more duties. So this uh, job description better reflects what it is she's doing. Cool. Any questions? Again, just to continue to reorg as we've done for the last year and a half, so thank you. Roll call, please. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Sferaza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Moving on to item K under miscellaneous, resolution author adopting, excuse me, resolution adopting the fitness center assistant job description. Resolve that in accordance with chapter seven, section two of the challenge charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby adopt the new job description for the position of fish fitness center <laughs> assistant, submitted on June 7, 2019 by Steve Belinda, the director of human resources. By Councillor Muller. Second. Second by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Sir, you got the floor? So this is a pretty simple edit to the previous uh, fitness instructor uh, position. It had previously required a college degree. Uh, we've tried to fill the position and it has been a challenge uh, because the pay is not really commensurate with a job requiring a college degree. So that's been removed from the uh, job description. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Roll call. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Sferaza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Moving under item L, resolution adopting the recreation program coordinator job description. Resolve that in accordance with chapter seven, section two of the town charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby adopt the new job description for the position of recreation program coordinator, submitted on June 3rd, 2019 by Steve Belinda, Director of Human Resources. Okay. Councillor Muller. Second by Councillor Ungeyer. So this is another one that has to do with the, the reorganization. Um, with Mary Keller taking on more responsibilities over at the Senior Center, um, we were quite short-staffed in recreation. So uh, this move brings a part-time person up to full-time, and um, it's going to better allow us to cover a lot of the, the recreation programs. It'll give us another full-time person to be on call. Um, for instance, last year we had some issues with a basketball program in the evening and it put us in quite a pinch and this will uh, it's going to be uh, much more effective than having a seasonal staff person taking on a lot of those programs any questions yep. i don't have any questions on this what i do is have a procedural question is there something that prevents us from doing these job descriptions in the consent agenda next time I think what we could do in leadership, we could list them, and if they go back and talk to your caucuses and nobody has questions about it, mm -hmm. we could do that. Okay. Thanks. Good recommendation. Okay. Just, just curious, though, what, what are programs we're seeing new? Anything new kind of people are interested other than pickleball? <laughs> pickleball's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> um, <coughs> well, I'm just saying, <laughs> we need a crew in Enfield, you know, a crew team down on the river, just throwing it out there. 
it, it's certainly something we could look into. Okay. Thank you. No questions? Roll call, please. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Sarraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungayer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. Yeah, that's right. You should have said that. <laughs> Moving on to item N under um, my, item M under resolu under miscellaneous. Excuse me. Resolution authorizing the town manager to apply for a grant and to enter an agreement with the State of Connecticut Department of Education in the fiscal year 2020-2021 for the Family Resource Center grant. Whereas the State Department of Education will be releasing the RFP for the Family Resource Center grant, and whereas the Family Resource Center is in the process of submitting a grant application to the State Department of Education for funds that will be available to the town in the fiscal year 2020 2021. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town manager, Christopher W. Bromson, is authorized to sign and submit the grant application in an aim on behalf of the town of Enfield with the State Department of Education. Be it further resolved that the town manager, Christopher W. Bronson, is authorized to sign an agreement subject to review and approval of the town attorney in an aim on behalf of the town of Enfield with the State of Connecticut Department of Education for the 2020-2021 Family Resource Grant submitted on June 17, 2019 by Damian Humphreys, our acting director of social services. So moved. Councilor Muller. Second. Seconded by, Dep uh, by Councilor Angar. Sir, you got the floor? Yes, yeah, so this is a two-year grant uh, that helps our family resource centers uh, fund for staffing uh, and programs. It reduces our general fund uh, impact uh, at $100,000 per year, so that's a $200,000 uh, grant that we're applying for. And um, we have received it over the past a number of years, uh, and it helps uh, run our pro programs, especially our grandparents raising grandchildren's program here in Enfield. Any questions? I just want to say I personally appreciate the last bullet, which doesn't require out-of-state travel. That's very, I'm sorry, it's very important. I appreciate it. I think that's, You're welcome. You know, again, as we're talking about managing mo budget money and, and, again, being transparent, that's transparent in my opinion, so thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Sferraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungayer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Moving on to item N, N, excuse me, under miscellaneous, resolution authorizing the town manager to apply for a grant and to enter an agreement with the North Central Regional Mental Health Board, Inc., NCRMHB, for the fiscal year 2020. Connecticut State Opioid Resource Grant, SOR, whereas the NCRMHB has provided a grant opportunity for the Youth and Family Services, whereas the Youth and Family Services is in the process of making a grant application to the NCRMHB for the Connecticut SOR Community Mini Grant. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the town manager, Christopher W. Brownson, is authorized to sign and submit a grant application in the name on behalf of the town of Enfield to North Central Regional Mental Health Board, Inc., be it further resolved that the town manager, Christopher W. Bronson, is authorized to sign an agreement subject to review and approval by the town attorney in a name on behalf of the town of Enfield with the North Central Regional Mental Health Board, Inc., for 2020 Central State Opioid Resource Grant, or excuse me, Response Grant, June 17, 2019, by Damian Humphrey, Acting Director of Social Services. So moved. By Councillor Muller, Second. by Councillor Ungar. Sir? Yeah, so this is a mini grant uh, that will help our prevention uh, and education work uh, on the dangers of uh, and misuse of uh, substance uh, substances such as opioids and alcohol. Uh, so it's a small amount that we're applying for, uh, but again, it's for prevention work and education. Any questions, Councillor Sferraza? You work in conjunction with the police department on, on some of these programs. Is this one of them? Uh, I don't think this is one of them, uh, but a lot of the work is done in collaboration with the police department, the Enfield Together Coalition. So, um, it, it, for this particular grant, no, but um, a lot of the work is done in collaboration with the stakeholders. But in if the, the need arose, you, you certainly could consult with them if you had questions or anything. And like we, that. Do. we do. Okay, we certainly great. do. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Thank you, sir. Roll call, please. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Sferaza. Four. Councillor Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. There's nine in favor, and then against, no abstentions. Moving on to item O under miscellaneous resolution allowing the hiring of a community service social worker for fiscal year 2020. Whereas the Town Council approved the 2020 fiscal year budget for the Adult and Community Service Division in the Enfield Social Service Department, whereas the position of Adult and Community Service Manager will become vacant on August 2nd, 2019, whereas the Community Service Social Worker is vital to providing services, referrals, and outreach to the community. Resolved that the Community Service Social Worker will be hired in fiscal year 2020. Submitted on June 17, 2019 by Damian Humphrey, Acting Director of Social Services. By Councillor Muller. Second. By Councillor Sparraza. Sir? Yes, so our exceptional uh, social worker, Jessica Russell, who uh, this year uh, became the program manager for uh, adult and community services with Enfield Social Services, she's, at, she's actually leaving uh, the department uh, to work for the Board of Education, so Enfield continues uh, to benefit from her expertise her knowledge and her commitment to the community. Uh, she's going to be working as a social worker for the Board of Education. Um, and as we looked at the reorganization and the needs of the department, uh, we certainly uh, can use a social worker with a concentration in geriatric services uh, to serve uh, our population here in Enf Enfield. So that is why we're requesting to fill this position instead of a program manager a social worker, which uh, will certainly have a lower impact financially to uh, our budget, but it will meet the needs of the community in a greater way. Any questions? So this will be specific for, again, community, not, not within the schools, but like, again, community type social work. Correct. Right. Uh, so our current social worker is leaving to work right. for the Board of Education, but... But this would focus on some of the needs in a community? Oh, yes. Right. Good. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Sraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. There's a nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for hanging in there. Item P remains on the table. We, are act, we will act at the July meeting on item P. Item Q, resolution authorizing the town manager to submit application to the state, state of Connecticut for the 2000, 2019 Neighborhood Assistant <laughs> Act. There was a public hearing was held on June 17, 2019 to allow interested citizens an opportunity to express their opinion regarding which program shall be included in the town of Enfield's application under provisions of the Neighborhood Assistant Act and whereas a proposal was submitted by the Hasville Institute Conservancy, Conservancy Society, Inc., and whereas the following proposal is acceptable to the Enfield Town Council within the guidance of proposed for the proposed programs under the Neighborhood Assistant Act. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town of Enfield 2019 proposed program application be submitted to the State of Connecticut Department of Revenue under the provision of the Neighborhood Assistant Act shall consist of the proposal identified in the preceding paragraph. The, net, the Enfield Town Manager is hereby authorized to submit this application to the State Department of Revenue and, and to approve any donations received as a result of this application submitted on June 17, 2019. By Councillor Muller. Second. By Deputy Mayor Suzak. This was the matter of the previous public hearing, I think, ably explained by Mr. William Lee. Yep. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Sferraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungai. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Moving on to item R under miscellaneous, a resolution adopting a legal assistant job description, resolved in accordance with the Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter. The Enfield Town Council does hereby adopt the job description for legal assistant. Submitted on June 5th, 2019 by Steve Belinda, Human Resource Director. So moved. Councillor Muller. Second. By Councillor Sakala. Uh, do we turn over to the town attorney on this one, or no? Only if you have questions. Any questions for the town attorney? This, again, is part of the process right. of, of yep. um, making sure that the job descriptions match what yep. is being done in the job, and this is an instance of that. 
So any legal opinion you want to offer? Yeah, I would, <laughs> I would encourage you to support it. Very good. Essentially, it reflects reality. Yeah. This, this position has not been clerical slash secretarial in, yeah. I'm going to say, practically decades. It's morphed gradually, and this the person in that position does far more in the way of legal assistant work than just garden variety clerical. Very well done. Roll call, please. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Terrazzo. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzanne. Four. Councillor Ungayer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Is nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Moving on to item S. Under miscellaneous resolution, resolution to settle pending property tax appeal. Resolved that the Enfield Town Council does hereby authorize the town attorney. Maria S. Elderson uh, or her designee to settle the outstanding tax assessment appeal in the following action. CMI Phoenix LLC versus the town of Enfield, docket number HHB-CV-18-6046131-S, dash 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 the fair market value of the property known at 89 Phoenix Ave to be 2100000 for the grand list of October 1, 2017, submitted by the Office of the Town Attorney on June 4, 2019. So by Councillor Muller. Seconded by Councilor Sagala. You guys are slow today. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, Maria, anything on this one or Chris? No, I think it was adequately yeah. covered during the executive session last time. But if you have any questions on it, I'll try to answer. I mean, the value came up substantially from when the plaintiff was at the BAA. They were at 1.6, so it's a substantial increase. So we don't think it's, we think it's a very good so settlement. So if we prove this, it's a sign, did they have to approve the deal? Or is that already? No, it's already been, it's fine. I know I probably shouldn't, but I have to admit, I have to say this. There, there's other properties for this individual that hopefully we are monitoring from a, hopefully we're monitoring from a blight perspective, and I'll, I'll be as generic as that. Okay. All right. I know this doesn't affect that, but I'm sorry. We have to take everything into account as we look forward. Okay. Yep. Any other questions or comments? Hearing on roll call, please. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Terraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungar. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Item T stays on the table. It wasn't moved to miscellaneous. Um, item 16, public communications. Would anyone like to speak, the speak before the council at this time? Anyone like to speak before the council at this time? Mr. Young, three minutes uh, at this time as opposed to the five. You can get you can get in within two minutes. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you, George Young, Holly Lane, Enfield, Connecticut. I just want to go back to the question I had originally regarding the loan from the town to the WPC. I said if they, it could be fifty thousand dollars of interest income on a two and a half million dollar loan at two percent. What I forgot to say is, what about if there is some kind of agreement that it's retroactive from when they first got the loan? So if you could answer that question, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Young. Anyone else like to speak for the council at this time? Gretchen. Welcome. Thank you. Gretchen Pfeiffer Hall for Summers Road. Um, first, I want to thank Councillor Kiner for bringing up the PFAs um, that are being used by the fire departments, because um, I read those articles as well, and that was a concern. And here in Enfield, we do have a number of areas with um, with aquifers, so I think it's it's a very important issue to to our community and our our water source. So the other thing um, that Karen and I wanted to bring up was, um, and I sort of missed it, but part of the town manager's PAR. report, the PAR report, um, talking about the community gardens and a need for additional space. So a few years ago, the town council took money from the open space fund, a couple, a couple hundred thousand dollars, to purchase property on Chapel Street to tear down um, a dilapidated building so 
that's open space money and it's still open space so I think that would be an excellent location to expand the community garden program um, in, in Thompsonville. And what Karen? Um, Karen LaPlante, again, this is for the Conservation Commission. Um, we've been working on the open space, um, trying to get that uh, behind Walgreens between Elm and Shaker. And the town owns a pretty good sized parcel. I think it's 11 acres. Uh, something, six, like something, something like 11 acres. And we've been trying to design that into not only about an acre to an acre and a half of community garden space, um, but also walking trails and a little picnic area and so forth. Um, but so far, they're, you know, we're trying to do everything and figure out the process and um, mostly without staff. And we did ask this budget year for uh, money to save the barn because the barn is still a pretty good structure for the roof, but um, we were told we weren't getting any money whatsoever for that. But we're looking for grants and, uh, and so forth. So that hopefully will become a larger community garden space where even a small farmer might be able to um, open up a space and um, maybe sell his goods at a stand or uh, the farmer's market in town. So we'll be looking to you for your support in the future on that once we get it all figured out. But there's a lot of people that um, we've talked to in the town that are already willing to step up to the plate to help clear the area that we're looking at. Um, we've had a soil guy look at the soils and he determined where we should put the gardens. Um, there are some wetlands on the site. Uh, we think we can put a well in with a cistern where people could draw water out of the cistern um, and uh, and use it for that. So, and, and we are looking for this to be a little bit different than the garden in, in Thompsonville, which has small raised beds. So we're looking at something larger and it seems that all the research that we've done, every every town that has these community gardens, um, they're, they're very popular and they're always signed up for um, well in advance of the, of the growing season and, and they have repeat customers. Um, so we've been working on, on a mission statement and, and a whole plan as to how to uh, create this, this program. So Thank that's you. it. Thank you both. Appreciate Mr. It. Mayor, I just think it would be appropriate. We, we discussed this with staff last week, so the cavalry is to the rescue. We will assist you. We, we had asked Lori Whitney to be looking for other locations because the current garden is such a tremendous success, and as you say, it's fully occupied and spoken for in advance. So when you get such a response, it's such a wonderful program that we are, we are anxious to work with you to expand it. So we'll be in touch, and the staff will help you with this mission. And, and the good part is, is uh, this Elbin Shaker is on the bus line, so anybody could get there. You know, anybody that can hop on the bus can can get over there. Um, so I, I think it's a, a really great spot. There's a lot of condos in the area. If anybody, you know, in those condos wants to um, have a have a little garden space, they could walk over there. Um, and we're looking for possibly corporate sponsors too. And and the Chapel Street is just vacant land, so. Thank you both. Thank you both. And you already own it. That's open space. Uh, Bob. Bob T. Katz, 815 Woodgate Circle. <clears throat> I'd like to see the qualifications of what you need to have to serve on the planning and zoning. But guess what? There's no qualifications on any of these boards and commissions. It's a plus if you have experience. If somebody wants to serve and a party appoints them, you should honor their appointment, not go against their appointment. Some of these people on these commissions are rude to the cu our customers, people that want to bring a business in town. They're rude. They give them a difficult time. The planning and zoning approved the, the Dunkin' Donuts down the street when Pride wanted to open a donut shop, in a, and it was a previous donut shop years ago, Donut Delight, and they gave it such a difficult time on setback and all the other rules that they made, I don't even think it's been approved yet. They had to buy property and everything else. So 
I think that's really ridiculous. Secondly, the school matter, this uh, diversity thing, the imbalance, it's a serious matter. We got, we, Enfield got cited in a two-page report, but nobody said a word. The superintendent didn't inform the school board. This is very serious. And it's, and it's, it's a 25% percentage from, from the whole district. And, and the superintendent must have known about it, or he didn't bother to, to inform anybody, and that's wrong. If there's a state law, you have to follow it. And if you didn't follow it, you should pay the penalty. Thank you. Thank you. Karen. Karen LaPlante, 166 North Maple. Um, just to touch base a little bit on the fire protection bill that you got, that was quite a surprise. Um, basically, from a public utility standpoint, it's the cost to provide the additional water required for fighting fires. So it was my understanding, and somebody in the public works should probably check this, but I believe it's anything over six inch main, because um, six inch is needed for domestic water. That's to service all the commercial buildings, the houses, everything else in town. Anything over that is considered for fire protection. When the fire districts, um, the fire districts pay for all the hydrants, okay, in their districts on the street right of way. The town should be paying for zero hydrants, but I believe there are one or two on your bill. And that probably should be straightened out to the right fire district. But the mains in the grounds should be paid by the town, which is what I believe you, that bill is. It's for the inch foot charge. Um, because the wells, the water's coming from the wells being stored in tanks, either on Enfield Street, say Connecticut Water. They have a tank, tanks on Enfield Street, they have tanks over on Brainerd Road. Hasville Water has tanks up near Green Manorville. And when there's a fire, that water has to come down the mains and get to the fire hydrant that's drawing it. Um, it may cross two or three fire districts. So it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, if you're gonna, if you're thinking you want to break the fire inch foot charge up by district, I think you're wrong because, um, say the tanks on Brainerd Road, that's in North Teville's fire district, but water is going to Summers from that area. Okay, so so it's going up to the prison, up through the the pump station, and so forth. So the inch foot charge should be paid by the by the town. Um, I hope that someone is checking that inch foot. If the water company has not audited those numbers in a long time, I think it would be a good time to look at it. They are installing larger water mains so they can pay for those water mains with the inch foot charge. And, and they're doing that before we put our roads in. So instead of having a 12 inch main, they now have 16 inch mains. And that's so much more per inch foot for every mile they put in. And they're also getting paid for that through the WICA charge on the bill, which is probably about 10 years in now on that. And those numbers, I believe, get adjusted twice a year. So pu public works should keep an eye on that. There's a separate utility charge for those items. And the last item, I know I heard the bell ring, um, is I hope in the personal property tax returns of the water companies, it's reflecting the changes in the water main, the value of the changes in the water main, so they are paying taxes on those water mains that we're paying for fire protection on. So that, there's, there's like a multi, right. somebody should be looking at this and understanding what it's all about. I, and if anybody has a question, I'd be more than happy to answer it. <laughs> I used to charge that in Ellington, so I, I understand the billing process for that. Thank, thank you, appreciate it. There he is.
Hello, everybody. Mary Ann Turner, Seven Meadow Road. Um, I figured I'll take a minute to explain the, uh, the Pride Station, just in case the public at large is interested. Uh, the Pride Company wants to put in this um, gas station and this donut spot, which is fine. They came in with plans and they had to come in front of ZBA, and ZBA gave them a variance because part of the problem is they're in two towns, they're in two different states, and that's a little bit of their problem to do what they want to do. And they didn't have enough frontage or back, so we have worked with them, and I don't want the public to get the wrong impression that we're not working with people who want projects. The problem is he has a very difficult project to make happen because Massachusetts isn't being as, as I would say in a way as flexible and we're trying to make it work so don't take misinformation as fact um, one of the other things I heard that we're looking for diversity amongst the many I can only speak for myself. As the Republican chairman, I get notified on a pretty regular basis of people who come into town. Maybe they were a Republican in the past in another town. I reach out to them. I send them letters. I invite them. I don't start by asking them anything personal about them. Just come be part of the community. And I get people who come all the time. And, when, and the first thing I do is I put them on an interested list because maybe they're not sure because they're new to the area or maybe they're people who have been here a really long time and they just didn't know that they could participate. So when folks want to get put on boards or commissions, I don't stop anyone from coming to my side of the fence and sharing their interest. And I'll bet you have seen many of them who have come along the way to be put on boards and commissions. And they're usually there sometimes. Maybe they're not planning and zoning to have all that background. But they have to have common sense. And that's really important, that people need to come and have an open mind, common sense, and be willing to do the work. Because it's not there for your resume. It's meant there for this whole town to do get something from it. Now, the real reason I came is during the Christmas time, the police department does something really fun. They do this thing about lights on people's houses. Okay, I'd like to throw out an idea to you folks, to the police department, that they do something fun for people who have really great gardens. And I have a really great garden. So I, since I don't put up much on the Christmas light thing, I just think it would be pretty nice that we kind of get people excited. They, just the same way they do the Christmas thing, but they fill out the form and they get it put in. And, you know, I, and I think the police officers come by. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I was going to bring it up to um, the chief. But I just thought it was kind of a, an idea that maybe we could do one one. Maybe not this year, but something that they could take on. So thank you. Thank you. Walter. Walter Cruzel, 21 Charlie Road, Chairman of the Board. I'd like to thank the town manager for his update on Stowe and Head Start and listing out all the staff that has been working diligently on making this happen and meeting every Friday and we'll be meeting until it's all done. So wanted to thank you for that and thank you for the updates. And we'll leave it at that. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council at this time? Anyone else? Going once, going twice. Declare public communications closed. Uh, councilor communications item, sorry, i make sure I get my numbers right, 17, Councilor Sparaza. I just want to bring um, something to the attention of everyone in town, if you're not aware of it. A couple weeks ago at the uh, State House, the House of Representatives and the State Senate uh, made an amendment to what's called the Connecticut Trust Act. So basically what that is, is it dictates to our law enforcement people, both state and local, whether or not our police officers can cooperate with federal law enforcement. Now, I'm not talking here tonight 
about how you feel about illegal migrants and all that. I'm talking about this bill that was passed, and Governor Lamont said he's going to sign it, says that if the Enfield police has somebody in custody and they happen to be here illegally, but they're here, they're under arrest for whatever, um, and federal law enforcement is looking for them, could be for a murder, could be for a violent crime, the local police department now will not be allowed to cooperate or assist our federal law enforcement partners. So I, I just find it incredulous that, again, I'm not getting into the debate about I have my opinions on how you should come into the country. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when a police department has somebody under arrest, whether they're legal or illegal, and federal law enforcement is looking for them f to solve a crime, you're not going to be allowed anymore to cooperate with our, with our law enforcement partners. We turn to the federal government, we work with the FBI, they're coming here in a couple weeks and tell us all the, the things they offer our town, ATF, DEA, but now when it comes to ICE, we are barred by statute under this law that the governor said he was going to sign from cooperating with them. So I just would suggest this to people for anything that comes before you. Find out whether how your state rep and how your state senator voted for that. Not that it's going to change anything. And if people want to say, why am I immersing myself in something that's not a town issue, it most certainly is a town issue because if we have somebody locked up that the federal authorities are looking for in connection with a murder or, or a serious crime and we can't cooperate with them, I submit to you we're less safe. So I ask you to just look to see how people voted and, and if you agree with them, fine, and if you don't, but just know what's going on. And the last thing is, and it just a force a habit, uh, Walter reminded me it's the last day of school. I mean, a lot of kids running around the neighborhoods in the summertime. Let's get back into that mode, slow down, especially in the neighborhoods. That we don't want a tragedy, so that's all. Councilor Bosco? Hey, um, on the boards and commissions, two years ago when I was elected, I took an oath to take what was the best interest of the town of Enfield. So sitting here, to put a person on a border commission, I feel I have to take the most qualified the most responsible and the one that fits the bid best. And who does it fall on? That falls on my responsibility. So if I feel someone's not qualified, I feel someone's not up to a job, I'm not going to vote them in. I don't care why, who they are, what they are. That's what makes it the voters that voted me in and I'm doing what I feel is best for them. So if that means that someone doesn't get on because they're not, in my opinion, qualified, that's how I'm going to vote. And if the people don't like it up to that time, then when it comes in November, they have the opportunity to change it. But at least I can say that I always did what I felt was best for the voters of Enfield, and, I'm, I, and, and I don't play no games. And that's where I'm going to end it tonight. Anyone else? That's it. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councilor Carla. All those in favor, by show of hands. Good night, everyone. Thank you.